Apple. Come Allen. Come Allen. Allen. Come Allen. <laughs> uh, the graphics that you guys saw in the opening are from Cam Allen. Thank you. Uh, and definitely go follow him on Twitter. His Twitter. Is... Thank you, Horizontal, for the follow. <laughs> I might have to turn off the sound notifications for that because it's very loud. <laughs> um, but his Twitter is down in the corner. It says Cam Allen. Uh, definitely worth a follow. He has way more stats than what you guys are looking at right now. Uh, or Horizontal made the graphics, sorry. Um, they're amazing, uh, Molly. Good call out. They're, they're freaking awesome. Uh, Rich, Livin, Mike, thanks for the follow. Hino, thanks for the follow. All of you guys that have followed, appreciate you guys that followed before the stream even started. Um, so I have a guest today, and as you can see, he's frozen on the screen because you guys are just going to hear his voice. Um, it's a great picture, by the way. <laughs> it is. I mean, <laughs> I like I had to pause your video and catch you. <laughs> right. All good. It. Um, uh, so what's up, Pat? By the way, I see you in the chat. So um, what we're going to do today is we're, this is going to be very laid back. This is not the sticks for those of you that used to watch my show. We're not doing like an official um, like podcast. Goalie is not hosting it. Um, he, I tried to get him to, but he had to travel uh, back home from Minnesota. And so he couldn't until tomorrow, but I can't do it tomorrow because I got to work. So, um, but we're going to talk about, we're going to show some more of those graphics. We're going to talk about the standings. We're going to talk about our favorite moments, the players. Um, we're going to talk about specific matches. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking to you guys in the chat. So um, whenever you want to start talking, if you have something to say, just say it. And we'll we'll try to go back and forth and get in the mix when we can. Uh, but I'm going to start by introducing myself. Uh, for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Kingdom Soldier, and uh, I've been playing Call of Duty, watching Call of Duty for uh, probably 10 years. Um, I've been a Call of Duty fan for a very long time. I tried to play COD 4, and I sucked at it, so I went back to Halo, <laughs> and then I think it was like Modern Warfare 2 that I actually started grinding really hard on. Like, I just love that game, and then um, Black Ops 1 I played a lot, Black Ops 2, of course, that was where I started making YouTube videos. And then at the end of Black Ops 2, or somewhere in the end of Black Ops 2, um, or in the middle, I took a break and I came back and I became an esports commentator. It's really weird. I'm not going to tell the whole story. It's in plenty of my videos. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been an esports, Call of Duty esports fan ever since. Um, and franchising is here, and I'm excited. Uh, we had an amazing weekend, lots of people watching. Uh, I think way more than some people thought. Um, yes, Modern Warfare 2 is great. I love it. Input with Atlanta not facing Chicago, eight of the 12 tournaments. Ooh, I didn't even know that, bro. I'm going to have to look into that. Like, that's actually a good question that we're going to we're gonna get into later. I didn't know that they weren't facing each other at eight of the 12 tournaments. That's crazy. <laughs> um, it's going to be a big deal when they do face each other, I guess. <laughs> so, anyway... Um, you guys can see all my links down below for subscribing and checking out my YouTube and my Twitter, uh, donating, all that kind of stuff is below the stream. But I'm going to let uh, Icon introduce himself uh, and tell us what you want us to call you, Icon, <laughs> because um, you have different names in your di in the different locations that where you're at. And uh, <laughs> if Icon is, is the best way to, to call you out, then that's what I'll call you for the rest of the show. But if you just want to introduce yourself, tell us... Um, how long you been? Um, what you? How long you been doing whatever you're doing in Call of Duty? What you do on your YouTube channel, which I think is freaking amazing, um, which is you guys can see above his picture. Yeah, so uh, icons fine. That yeah, that's perfectly okay. fine. Um, I don't know. So on my YouTube channel, I really just I I break down the strategy behind the games. So I'm not really doing too much like news or anything like that. I just I'll take a game and I'll I'll break it down and I'll I'll try to tell people why whatever's happening is happening. So like as it's about to rotate hard points or as there's something happening in domination, like I'll just I'll try to slow it down, I'll draw it up so that people can understand because like we talked about earlier, so we talked a little bit before this, but sometimes this game, especially with the Switch to five to five and how how fast people are dying things just happen so quickly in this game that sometimes it's hard to see what exactly is happening so i'll just take those i'll just i'll, I'll break it down so that 
I don't know. So, so people can be more informed on kind of what's happening on a game to game basis. But I started playing back in call of duty four. That was my first one. And I just played it religiously. After that, I did play quite a bit competitively. Um, I attended some events. I never placed like top 10 or anything, but wait, 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 wait. slow down. What game, uh, what games did you attend events in? So for events, I attended an AW, actually, Advanced Warfare. And I, I live in Ohio, so we went to the ones that we did attend. We went to MLG Columbus, played in the open bracket, you know, won a couple games, lost a couple. It was more or less a thing, like, kind of just for fun. But, um, but yeah, it was cool to be a part of the scene, even back then when it was still growing a little bit. Yeah, that, that was a great game. It was. It was. I, I think it was underrated, but... I don't know. Well, the new ones now are better. Everybody appreciates it. Everybody's looking back at AW like, man, that was a good year. Like that was the ge- that was besides Black Ops Two, which I had Kingdom Eights, and I would invite people into my stream, and we would play Eights for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> um, besides Black Ops Two, AW was another game where I kind of grinded it, you know, and played. And that was when I played my first GB was on AW. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Black Ops 2, you can't beat Black Ops 2. Even though it had its issues, that's like, that's everybody's tops for sure. It was just so, like, comp- the, you know, when we talk about things like competitive integrity, which is a big deal right now, with, you know, Aix is talking about that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Black Ops 2 was just a great all-around game. It was very competitive, <clears throat> and it brought, because of, I mean, Nate Shot, Scump, and everybody, all the personalities blew up in Black Ops 2, Optic House, all this kind of stuff, like, Black Ops 2 did for our eSport what I don't think any game since then has done. Yeah, well, the other thing with... and, and So that game, uh, it's it's a lot if you're thinking about like just the strategy of that game. It's kind of a lot like MW in that. I, so Black Ops 4, I enjoyed, but I, I just hate how like... For me personally, I'm not a big fan of the specialists and all that just because it just seems like, okay, now you didn't do anything really to earn the specialist. So it was always just like, okay, here's your specialist. Now it's your turn to go change the map. When like it wasn't really like earned that much. I like I just yeah. like the strategy of these games a little bit better where it's it's real strategic and you have to work your way around the map and I don't know. Just how I feel. No, I feel it. Um I agree with you. It it is uh the, 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 this game, in my opinion, is kind of back towards like its traditional boots, but there are this the five on five definitely changes the game. So um, I, I guess let's start getting into uh, the event that we just had this yep. weekend. Um, and so what what I what I'd like us to do is kind of start with uh, an overall grade and maybe why you would give it that grade um, and. I'm going to actually let you go first and you can just go A through F. I know you're not going to give it an F, but <laughs> um, just talk about kind of what you were hoping to see and what you saw and why you would grade it the way you would grade it. Yeah. So man, there's, there's so many, I feel like we could do an hour long show just on the event itself, <laughs> but I don't, if, if I'm giving it a grade, I'd probably give it, I don't know, somewhere in like that B minus range, B range somewhere in there. I feel like, I don't know. I, I feel like, and just in terms of the presentation, it usually went pretty seamless. Like from you know from the booth to the casters to the match. Every once in a while, they had to restart something. But I feel like for the very first time with a whole brand new production and a new team and everything, I thought, I mean, I thought it was pretty decent. Um, there were a couple things that I that I didn't like. Like sometimes, like the player intros. Sometimes those were a little weird, like having them walk down the aisles and whatnot. Whereas, so like one day they would walk down the aisles, the next day they were appearing from behind the screen. The next day, the next day they were standing in front of their stations. So like, I don't know, I I get that it's the very first one and they're trying to like figure out kind of what to do there, what's going on. Right. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I thought overall with, I was interested to see how it would flow with it being the very first time that you know, a new team, you know, MLG is not doing it anymore. So like everything was basically built from the the ground up. And I I think the, I think the venue was great too. The armory in Minnesota, they're just, they did a nice job with the graphics and the screens and, and I don't know, overall, of course there were some things that probably could have been better, but for the most part, I mean, Oh, the only other thing that I'll say is that on Saturday, 
everything was delayed like an hour and a half. So yeah, that that's <laughs> kind of like like Call of Duty's known for that, right? That's like kind of who they are. Everything's just usually kind of delayed a little bit. Uh, so right. maybe that could have been fixed, but I mean, we got an extra in the end, an extra two hours of Call of Duty that day or something. So I don't know. I'm not going to complain about it too much. Okay, so I have to ask because of what you do. And yep. again, um, I want to shout to Icon, his YouTube channel, where he breaks down games. He breaks down scrims. He broke down, I think you uploaded like 10 of the matches already? Yeah, probably uh, 10, somewhere in there. I think it was close to 10. I was counting today. I was watching a couple of them. Um, just really breaking down the map live and what the players are doing, what they should be doing, and especially if you're a competitive player. I, if I was like an even an AM team, I would watch it. But um, give me your thoughts on the broadcast as far as the gameplay goes and your as someone who's trying to study what's happening on the screen like what that was like for you all right so (laughs) so the broadcast presentation i know so first thing again this was all brand new so i do think there were you know there were so many different toys that they had to play with and they were trying to do so many different things but i do feel that from the beginning of the weekend to the end of the weekend it got better it got a little bit you know, more seamless things were able to be seen and whatnot. But if you really wanted to get down to the nitty gritty, there were a ton of things that they could have fixed. So first of all, just the nature of this game. And we talked about this a little bit, just the nature of the game by itself, five V five, the time to kill is so fast. And there's just, there's, you don't, sometimes they're third person. Sometimes they're looking at static cams. There's just, there's so much happening that sometimes it's hard to even follow what's going on. In fact, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Overwatch. And I don't want to go like down on that tangent, but like if you're watching an Overwatch game and you've never seen Overwatch before, you turn into, you, you tune into an Overwatch match and you just, you have no idea what's happening anywhere. There's just so much stuff everywhere. You don't know really what's going on. And a little bit, that's kind of how this reminded me. Um, <clears throat> but, it, I mean, if we're getting down in the specifics, so in the mini-map, so a lot of what I do, I can tell what's happening throughout the match by looking at the mini-map. So who's right. flanking, who's taking over spawns, where different teams are, stuff like that. So as I'm watching the mini-map, if there was a team that was a light color, it was super easy to see their arrows. But if there was a team that was a dark color, you really can't tell. So I'm trying, yeah. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on in these matches, and I can really only see one team. And then with the static cams, so when the mini cam, when the mini map goes away, now they're looking at a static cam, and I I can't see flank routes. I can only see what's going on in the hill. So to try to break down those games, it just gets a little bit difficult, just because. There's just so much stuff that you can't really pick up on. Right. I, man. So as an observer, and I'll just say like what I heard is that the reason they went with third person in the beginning, because, and I won't say a name, I don't want to say a lot of names during certain parts of this show, but there was a personality that was on Twitter that was kind of going at the community for having the perspective they have. Like they were, they were almost being very argumentative about having an opinion that it was hard to watch in third person hard point. But, and then their reasons were that, you know, they want to appeal to a broader audience and all this kind of stuff. And, and it's like, but if I was a complete new to call of duty, I would have no idea what was coming up, going on in that first match. Like the, and, and we're talking about like, you're introducing it to the world. And this is where I think, I think we could do a better job of this every year. Like, I'll say again, I got a DM from someone that was on air talent telling me, thank you for being public about your opinion. It was not us. It was not the observing team. There's people that just thought they knew better. And I mean, Maven said that publicly. He just was like, people thought they knew better than we did. And I remember listening to Maven on Spitfire podcast. Thank you guys for all the follows. I'll call you guys out in a second. But I remember Maven saying on the Spitfire podcast that we were going to have the best broadcast experience that we've ever had in history. The tools that they had were going to be things that we've never seen. And I'm getting excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait. And then I sit there and I'm like... Well, well, that's the thing. Like, it's there. 
like all the tools are there. They just have to figure out when to use them and how to use them. Facts. That like right, man. I wish I could just quote that and tweet it. <laughs> all the tools are there. They just need to figure out how to use them and when to use them. And and yeah, Maven keeps going out and saying it's like he's the spokesman for <laughs> the production team or something, um, because other people didn't want to be so vocal about the fact that they didn't like it, you know. Um, but people, you can't blame Paradox. You can't. You, you can't blame anyone because what I guarantee happened is they said they had a meeting and they said, no, you will use third person in hardpoint, period. Because yeah, it's possible. Yeah. To appeal to a broader audience. I mean, it was not, you know, Paradox and Maven and Benson are sitting there like, oh, my gosh, we we just have to use third person, guys. It's It looks so much better. And that's where I think maybe have a private LAN scrim where you actually broadcast it for a small audience and let them give feedback. Because this happens every single year. Two things happen every year. We do a patch right before the first event that is within a week of the event. And then the second thing is there's things on the broadcast that we're like, why did you do that? And then you hear from casters, well, we told them. They didn't listen. And it's like at some point, the millions of dollar people way up at the top have to kind of go, you know what, let's listen. And you know what? I mean, I applaud them for listening to the tournament play style and all that kind of stuff. So good grade b minus um one thing one grade, oh, one thing ahead. i'll say just real quick on the specifics of the broadcast is that like we were talking about with how all of this stuff is there like if you were just watching you know from somebody's pov like say you're you're watching from formal's pov there's a mini map in the bottom left hand corner perfect you can watch and you can follow along as soon as they went to third person or a static cam that mini map goes away now you can't see what's happening with rotations or anything and just to build on top of that, the pictures that were up in the top right-hand corner, sometimes the pictures were fine. Like, I feel like if they just got this down. So in Search and Destroy, the pictures are fine because I know that sometimes it was a little bit hard to see. But with the pictures, you could tell who was alive, who was left. You know, is it four versus two, two, v, two versus one, or whatever the case was. But between rounds, that's when they should show the stats. That's when we want to see, like, you know, is somebody 0 and 8? Or is somebody seven and one that was using a sniper? Like so between rounds, show us what the stats are. Whereas if you're watching a respawn game mode, we don't care about the pictures because there's so much happening. Like those pictures are always that you know, somebody's alive, somebody's dead, somebody has dead silence or whatever. So in respawn, just show us what's going on in the scoreboard. Just let us see, you know, is somebody on an eight streak? Is somebody twenty and four or whatever? So I, I feel like all that's why we said earlier that all the tools are there. We just have to, you know, tune in right. when to use which ones. So well, honestly, especially on day one, match one, during hard point, hearing he's on an eight streak and having nowhere to reference that. Exactly. You know, like nowhere on the screen could I I'm like, okay guys. I understand what you're trying to do, but Call of Duty is the, the first person shooter. It's not a first person shooter. It's not one of many. It is the first person shooter. And then on, I'm hearing people, oh, well, you should watch CSGO. I've watched CSGO. It's 100% search and destroy, even though that's not whatever you want to call it, um, all the time. There's, yep. it, 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 it's a game mode where, because I felt like third person did work well in search, but it's like you're watching it's a different type of game you can't compare the two and it was funny because the person that i was talking about that was tweeting they used the name of someone who was a good observer in in cs and the person that they used responded and basically <laughs> said um actually for a game like call of duty where it's fast-paced killing and jumping and sliding and yep. going through doors and you actually don't want to use third person as much like it's it's a good feature but and so i'll just i mean and we can put this to bed because i think there's no one that doesn't agree with us <laughs> you know yeah like, right we're just preaching to the I, choir at this point yeah we're, we're, <laughs> we're preaching to the choir i i feel like um that was one of those things that i'm happy i saw change throughout the weekend but i still i mean if i had to call out ch necessary changes when you highlight players you can't highlight an orange player in bright orange you can't highlight a yellow player in bright yellow it just it, it makes it so that we can't see them. Um, and I don't necessarily agree, D DZ. Um, I'll talk about your comment. We need Katie. Um, 
uh, they they did everybody dirty. If you think of it that way, they told everyone at the last minute whether they were going to be. Yeah, that's or not. that's like, terrible. That was unfortunate, but and uh, I tweeted it, Katie. You know, she just reached her subscriber goal. I think for the entire year of 2020 in one weekend because of the support she got, and now she's probably going to be a full time streamer. <laughs> and so um, her life was changed for the better out of a worse situation she made the most of it so bravo to her you know for doing what she did i think this praggy i've never seen her before i thought she did great she got better throughout the weekend um the only reason people would hate on her is because they're comparing her to katie who's like good friends with study and nameless and all the in and plays with them and you know and of course that's a person you see on stream all the time you're gonna want them um i thought she did a great job last year uh, but you know things change um and personalities change you know brycey was upset he wasn't casting at all He'll probably cast the London event. I would think they would hire him for the London event. So we'll see. Um, before I move on to my grading and everything, I'm just going to read this list. Uh, uh, Demon, thank you for subscribing. Oh, you subscribed seven hours ago when we weren't even here. Thank you, though, for your subscription. <laughs> uh, Toasty, White Objective, Rich Living Mike, uh, Cam Allen, Horizontal, Her Davy, Deviated, Taser, Somebody, Maybe, Vital, the Foreign Shadow, Franklin, Mr. Judy, and Sway Shocks. Thank you, guys. And whoever just followed. Thank you, guys. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was Shocks. Thank you, guys, for all the follows. We appreciate you guys. So my grade, overall grade for the event, um, I'm going to be a little more generous than you were, and I'm going to give it a B plus. Um, yeah, we're in the same ballpark. Yeah, if, if you fix the experience as an observer and have the times be a little more on, and maybe... The camera angles, look, okay, so I basically, you could call me an event coordinator. Um, when I was, uh, I, I was a pastor for 15 years and I ran a very large church and I had to run a, our Easter service every year at a stadium. And I had to coordinate over 200 volunteers. I had to get the police and it was just crazy. But camera angles matter. If you don't fill a room, and we have like 3000 people in our room, but if you don't fill a room, you you got to show an angle that makes the room look full. And during like the concert that they did mm -hmm. um, with the shredders, there's like, like 50 people. Us, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you're showing us how empty this place is. And that's not what you want to show on camera, you know, no. to a live broadcast to 60,000 people. Like you don't want to show them uh, the online experience. Cause you can't show people how many people are online. So bring it in tight and show it close. And if you have to just show the shredders, and just put them so we think that there's this huge audience that they're performing to just show them and so there's some some production stuff that that that's where i really think that they could have knocked this out of the park and hit a home run i felt like the graphics they used um i felt like the desk i felt like tp was freaking on point like that dude he should live there i'm happy they never moved him they switched out nameless and momo and all these other people but they didn't switch out tp he did a good um, job for sure uh, the casters did great because they brought the duos that had already casted together back. That was genius. Like, you know, putting Chance with uh, with Benson and Maven and Murph, they're never going to break up. They're like, you know, they're probably holding hands, skipping through some They're the duo, now. man. <laughs> uh, but they're great. Um, they're freaking awesome. <laughs> the Shredders did shred. That's funny, <laughs> Franklin. Um, but I, I really felt like to knock this out of the park, it was really just the little things that they're going to iron out, like the production and all of that. Um they handled difficulty really well. Um, uh, I'll show the. I'll see if I can find the schedule, DZ. I have to give you permission, or one of the mods can. But the um, they handled difficulty really well. They handled the Kobe Bryant really well. Um, yeah, they, they did a good job. The um, they handled the weird. No, well, I'll say they handled the thing with Minnesota and and uh, the gorillas as best they could. Because it was like, they just, you can't go into the next match and not tell us what happened. Like, I'm sitting there as an observer, like, what? Like, what do you mean it's 1 1 now? It was just 2 0. Like, and I, if I'm one of the gorillas, I'm tweeting the same thing. Yeah, we, we lost 2 2. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they did their best. And so I would give them a B plus because I felt like overall um, the viewership was good. Uh, I know that, and the things that I pay attention to is what do you do after tournaments? And I've always complained that MLG didn't get the matches up fast enough. And that's why all these other people that re-upload their streams were getting all the views. 
Uh, I didn't see a lot of that, so I think they actually took away that ability for people to just straight up take the entire match without putting yourself in it like you do. I don't think you can do that anymore without getting copyright. But um, the matches were up within 15 minutes. Yeah, it was. Oh, it was great. It was very. I was like, thank you for going in, highlighting the VOD, and putting it up on YouTube because YouTube allows you to do it that fast. And so yeah. I really. I think the after production was really good. Um, I noticed there was hundreds of thousands of views on some of the matches already, uh, which is what you want. You know, you want to grow that YouTube channel because that's going to be your main streaming platform for the rest of the year. Uh, we didn't put this in here, but let, I, I did want your opinion if you have one, and, and maybe in the chat you guys can say, what do you think about YouTube? Like using YouTube versus Twitch, and how was the viewing experience for YouTube versus Twitch? Well, like, I, I so... I saw an interview with Hex and how he was talking about how obviously it, it just seems like YouTube is the future of, you know, like this esports viewership thing just because that's where the biggest audience is. Now, I don't know if I agree with that just because like every live streamer that has left Twitch has seen their numbers diminish greatly. So I, I don't experience. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know how much I, I agree with that, but, um, I think it's a decent spot. I mean, especially if, if something like that could ever get integrated even to like YouTube TV. I mean, that's another outlet where you could easily take something from a YouTube broadcast and put it on YouTube TV. Um, I do think that in terms of their live streams, there's a little bit of an issue with resolution. Um, there are times when, I mean, I, I had this text thread with my buddies that I've played with forever where like sometimes like it, you'll have it pinged at 1080 at 68 frames and it just looks blurry and grainy and you can't really tell what's going on. So yep. I, I mean, I think there are just, you know, a couple, a couple issues here and there, but, um, I don't know. It, it's the first one, right? It's the first time this has happened. It's the first production of it. There's, there's going to be little things, but I'm, I'm certainly not going to kill them over it. No, of course. And so what you said in the beginning is absolutely true there. Um, YouTube has, um, I think they even have more live viewers right now than anybody, but they have more, like there's, I think there's in a minute, there's like a million uploads on YouTube every minute or something like crazy. Yeah. It's um, insane. It's, it's ridiculous. And so everybody's on YouTube, but what don't you get to do on YouTube that you're used to doing on Twitch? Post your emotes from your own stream and promote yourself or from streams that you subscribe to. So when I'm watching the Twitch chat and somebody puts scumps little GG, when the huntsmen win then it's like oh i'm I'm supporting scump i'm subscribed to him and i'm saying gg to scump with my subscription benefits and um the people in the chat are talking about having the same problems which i had as well uh franklin i'm glad you had great uh <laughs> a great <experience>. I had <laughs> yeah good for you <laughs> <laughs> it kept going up and down and back and forth and it was like good bad good bad good bad good bad yeah um and so for me, I had a very similar experience, but what you're saying is right about YouTube being the future. But I will tell you, I had a show on this channel, on my Kingdom Soldier channel, and I was convinced by a few people over at MLG TV when it was a thing because Optic had all left and went to MLG.TV, signed a contract. And so, and they experienced a loss in their numbers. And then I was like, well, if Optic goes, everybody's going. So then I went over to mlg.tv we switched our channel we did this whole big thing we never got as many subscribers as we had when we were on twitch we never got the same number of people watching um it was always and i mean like puckett volunteered to come on the show and help us promote the new show and all this and but it just it wasn't the same as twitch and yeah. we came back to twitch and we had basically lost a portion of our audience and so it was a mistake to leave Twitch, in my opinion. Now, for what I asked Merck today is, is it a conflict when you have all these pro players streaming on Twitch and then you're streaming the events on YouTube? Is it not a conflict like as far as legally, but is it a conflict in promotion and brand? You know, um, because the number one question I saw on Twitter when this event started was, where is it? Yeah. You know, where is it at? Where can I watch? Where can I watch? And then I went looking. I'm like, oh, it's obvious. So I go looking for tweets, and I'm like, dang, they're kind of buried. I got to find them here and there. Um, and then I didn't know if it was because the actual channel name is is the MLG COD channel. 
it's not actually called Call of Duty League. That's like the name that they were able to change it to. But the actual URL is official MLG COD. And so it's the old school MLG channel. And so, um, and I heard from people that were watching it on MLG TV because I guess it is available there. The quality was better. Uh, but they're not promoting that. They're, they're, you know, on purpose probably. And so I think YouTube is going to be fine. Um, Kevy Skills, who is the goat of Twitch chats, said that he is going. He is sending an email to um, to Fwiz about how to make the chat better and more interactive. Because you can't watch the chat on YouTube. You can't. Right. You, there's no mods, and it's it's like cancer in there. Like that chat was crazy. I was like, yeah, I'm not watching this. I'm not watching this. And if you and if you do on full screen the chat like takes up the left side of your screen. Like it, it, it's taking up your screen real estate to watch the chat. If you have it full screen. Oh, so that's a good point. So I, I, I don't know. It, it just seems like this is becoming like a, like a, a theme kind of that it's the first one. I think all this stuff will get better over time. Um, like, will. like, like think about it. like if it's January, 2021, we're probably not having any of these issues just because it's already been done for a year and this stuff has all been ironed out. So I, I, I think it'll get there. It's just you know we'll yeah. we'll we'll suffer for an event or two, and then it'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think um, now the one thing I will say the reason why I'm up in the B plus range for the event, and I guess if we move to GG's for like what I loved, um, we kind of have talked about it, but um, and we've talked about what could be better. But I'll say that for me, it was an event, if that makes sense. It was actually it was more than just some call of duty games it was an actual event where and even though none of this happened gary did not play hex all of the basketball stars and stuff yeah. didn't yep. play each other like none of that happened um all we saw was the shredders but i it felt like an event and the home team felt like the home team like when the rock yeah introduced, especially day two it was like whoa that's like, i'm glad know. that i'm glad that you touched on that because like that's a massive thing. Like I've seen this all over. There's a good chance that like those five players would have never gotten that response in any other format, you know, but since, no, but stop. since they were getting, yep, exactly. You, you, you basically are getting to get treated like old school optic gaming at your home. Yeah. It's cool, man. I, I like it. I love it. And, and, God RX, I think, tweeted out, which is embarrassing. He should have way more, but I thought he, I think he said like he reached 12K followers on Twitter, you know, and it was like, well, yeah, people know, like, you you feel low key like a superstar. Like, man, yeah. I'm scum. You know, like walking out here, like, hey, yo, this is great. All right. So um, let's move on. Unless you guys in the chat, if you have anything you want to share about, you know, the event overall, what you thought was good and bad. But um, let's move on to our favorite moment and or match. Um, and I'll start. Um, for me, I'm a Seattle fan because I live in Seattle and I'm a dad. So I'm a Seattle dad. I mean, it just makes sense. <laughs> <so much. laughs> um, but I would say my favorite match to watch, unfortunately, <laughs> was, yeah, when they got booed. Every Aix moment was priceless, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> they always are. Great. I, I, I love Aix because how he responds to it. He's like, I'm going to Los Angeles. You got to stay in Minnesota. Like I was like, oh, the, this, the shade has been thrown. But um, honestly, and I, I, I hate to say it, but um, watching New York versus FaZe was wildly entertaining to me. I honestly was wow. not that entertained by the Chicago Dallas. And let me actually... I'm going to pull something up for you guys. Uh, so this is the peak viewership. And you can see what – hold up. I'm going to cover my face even. You can see what the uh, top five were. And surprisingly, you see Seattle's up there on the bottom with one and two. And we were kind of debate or with four and five. We were debating why that is. Um, but that phase versus New York match, 62,000, um, that match was – really really uh fun to watch because the way that and i'll say when phase dismantled dallas like watching phase play call of duty is i was mesmerized by how good they look and tp said it he said 
I don't think people understand how hard this is to do at a pro level. Like to six O professional players from New York and Dallas. These are teams that have storied good search players on their teams, and they're six Oing them in search and destroy. Um, I liked the phase uh, New York match. That was probably my favorite match to watch. My favorite moment. Mm, I'll have to think about that one. I'll let you, uh, Icon, talk about your favorite match of the weekend. Yeah, my my favorite match by far was just the first one. Um, Chicago Dallas for me. It was just it was the kickoff. Even though now I'll say this, even though there were like a lot of quirks, it was the hardest to watch just because there it seemed like every five seconds they were trying to play with one of their new broadcast toys. So it was it was the hardest to watch, but for me it just seemed like it had the most intensity. Um, it 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 seemed to have the most hype around it. Um, it yeah. it kind of I don't know for me it built up even that last game it was the only map of the weekend that last game that domination game where where Chicago closed it out on Dallas I got goosebumps on my neck I, I just it was such a I don't know it was just such a moment for me. Um, but then, like we actually talked about earlier with with the Optic Gaming one, you're right in that. Even though they they seem to have lost a lot of, you know, their backing and the the quote unquote green wall, you're right. If if they tweet out that they're playing, it's going to three million people. So Which is why it was the most watched match. Exactly. So in terms of viewership, it's just when you have an account like that tweeting it out, more people are seeing it, so more people are probably, you know, tuning in. But yeah, for me personally, it was Chicago Dallas. I feel like there was so much hype around it. I feel like for the last four months, you know, Crim Six, you know, put something at the end of his intro video. And then when when Chicago released their team, like their roster reveal, Scump had that in the end of their roster reveal. So it's just like it was a culmination of like three or four months of trash talk for me. Um, I loved all the matches, but that one, I don't know, that one was just the best for me in my opinion. So I anticipated that one with just as much as you did, like, to be honest. Like, I was watching, like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be crazy. This is going to be amazing. Let me get my popcorn out and get ready. And it just was yeah. overwhelming of a match. I wanted to see game five. I wanted to see round 11. I wanted to see Scump versus Krim 1v1 for the ter- for the match. Like, I wanted to see the excitement that I saw in some of these other matches, like, you know, Toronto versus Minnesota and or or um, when uh, the Gorillas even played Minnesota like uh, I wanted to see a grudge match you know and that's one of the things I liked about the Seattle matches is they went five games like that, that's why I liked them like mm-hmm. I, I love the team but I also was just like yeah redneck they're s d they gotta fix it and uh, I'm not throwing shade at Nubsy but they need better coaching I mean, that's the only, I don't know how else to say it. You know, I just think he as a coach uh, needs to focus in. And what I would do if I was their team and I'm not a competitive player, there's at least, I I would, whoever is the in-game leader for search on their team would have to boot camp, like with some S&D star. Like um, they'd have to like literally boot camp and figure out the game in a different way and so that they could play it different because I felt like, and I'm going on a tangent, but I, I wanted to talk about Seattle. I felt like Seattle, um, they turtled a lot, and they they just were too slow. Teams are playing search fast in this game. They're not waiting. Like, everybody, I mean, I know Redneck, but it just didn't show. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody was um, expecting, like, everybody's just going to wait for dead silence, and then they're going to move quickly. But you got like Pristini running around the map, and of course Phase was crazy. You just couldn't keep up with where the heck they were. They were going to snipe you before you even thought about it. Through the smoke, doesn't matter. Um, yeah. They knew what positions to get into. They knew where to move. And and you can kind of talk about that. Like what what do you think um, Icon Seattle needs to work on specifically in their search game? Like what did you see when you watched that they need to work on? So I'm I'm glad that you mentioned Pristini because we talked about this a little bit. But even though if you look at Pristini's stats, he was sub 1.0 in terms of his search and destroy KD, um, or it was he had a he had a 1.5. So nothing, you know, nothing crazy. 
Yeah, his search KD, he had a 1.05. Whereas, if you're looking at Atlanta for comparison, Major Maniac had like a 14, Simp had a 6.5, Selium had a 5. So, like, you know, his stats weren't crazy. You would say that a 1.05 is pretty run-of-the-mill in terms of a search KD. But what's happening is a 1.5 from somebody like Pristini, who is constantly moving around the map, who's constantly pushing lanes, what's happening is that he's able to take that information and relay positions to his teammates. Whereas if you take somebody else that had a 1.5 that was playing it more traditionally, like, you know, sometimes what you might see from Seattle, um, if you're just holding down lanes, you're not really providing as much intel to your teammates or to the rest of your team. So um, I, I just feel like a, a lot of these teams are still you know, of course, they're trying to figure out their way, but they're playing this game how they might have played, you know, other, you know, different games in the past that were a little bit slower. Um, so, yeah, in terms of Seattle, somebody has to kind of take a charge there and push lanes a little bit because that's the that's the way that this game is played. You can't just sit back and watch lanes because the time to kill is so fast that you have to be taking people by surprise. Right. Um, and that, that didn't happen very often for Seattle. Um, but it never took anyone by surprise in my opinion. Yeah. And for me, we were just talking about exciting matches here. That's why for me, Florida, I know that they played Seattle, but Florida was so much fun to watch. Not only because all of their games went, you know, to game five, it's just, everything is so fast all the time and they're always pushing lanes and there's so much happening. Whereas, you know, some of these more yeah. traditional teams aren't playing that way at the moment. I like how you call them traditional teams. <laughs> yeah, it is traditional. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me see this comment. It's not sustainable with Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas alone. They aren't dominant enough in respawn to rely on that. But that team isn't going to destroy with pure gun skill. They need better positioning and strats. I agree. Excel, I agree. Um, and I think that's kind of what Icon was talking about. Is the, it, And that's why I said it's coaching. I heard TP say some stuff on the stage that they need to hear. But Teep will be the first person to say how hard it is to coach. Like coaching superstars that are getting paid more money than you, in some cases probably three times as much, has got to be difficult. You know, like I've got three rings. I'm the I, I have more money from playing Call of Duty than anybody in this game. What are you gonna tell me? You know, and I'm not saying that's how karma's attitude is, but it's gotta be difficult, you know, um, to coach those guys. The problem is even if they have someone take charge, you still have a bunch of guys who aren't really considered you're you're absolutely right, Redneck. But I I feel like you need someone that they're gonna listen to that actually knows a little bit more than they do, because right now I don't know who their IGL is, but um, I mean, and maybe it's App. Maybe that's the game mode he he takes over. You know, um, he can move and, pretty quickly. And but... see, that this is this is what I. So you look at the players on Seattle, all you know, mm -hmm. seasoned vets, all pros. But that's if you look at Chicago's roster. He gets a lot of flack, but that's why Gunless is so good. He's not afraid to play like the legend. He's not afraid to tell the legends of the game what they need to be doing. No, I, I broke down a, a video. I don't know, two or three weeks ago. You featured it on one of your things, I but it. Yep. but he just like he's not afraid to come out and tell it how it is and get in people's faces. And that's what imagine him on Seattle, where a lot of good players. But sometimes you need to be told what you need to be told, and that's what he does for Chicago. Like I'm looking at Seattle stats right now, and for respawn game types, they were all basically right around one or a little bit above one. But in search and destroy, like Enable had a point five, Slacked had a point six. Like everybody was below a one point zero KD in search, other than Apathy. So they just, you're right, they just need somebody to just get in their face and tell them no, or maybe not even get in their face, just just step up and be that leader and tell people, you know, this is where we need to be. This is the strat we need to be doing. This is how we need to counter what Atlanta's doing or whoever they're playing because that's what Atlanta does so good. Look at the stats that you have on screen right now. Those are insanity. A 14 KD, a 6.5 <laughs> KD, a 5 KD. I mean, that that's like, you might not have that from one player the rest of the year. So, I mean... Yeah, it, it, I don't know. I just think they need somebody to step up and, and you know, have strats and how to counter those strats and stuff like that. And that's um, that's where, honestly, 
I guess that get rid of enable and get okay. So here's the deal of vital. This is franchising. This isn't like <laughs> let sensor <censor> play. <laughs> this isn't like you just get to get rid of people. You know, this is a different time for Call of Duty. Yeah, um, it is. And you you don't get you don't get to just be like, well, we don't want you anymore. DM uh, somebody else and pick him up. And this is franchising, so these guys have to figure it out. This is like after the NBA trade deadline type stuff. This is this is not. Um, it's not, we're not in that place anymore. Um, peak viewership for Chicago versus Atlanta. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't even, uh, it wasn't, oh, I see what you're saying. Peak viewership will be, yeah. That's my son in the background, guys. Um, peak viewership will be when Chicago plays Atlanta. Probably every time they play each other, especially if they only play four times out of the 12 tournaments. Um, okay. So, one, one thing real quick, one thing I'll touch on before we move on is that I've spent, so just a little bit more from my background, I've spent basically the last 12, 13 years of my life coaching like 15 to 18 year olds. And sometimes like, I feel like this is what these guys need is that sometimes you just can't be afraid to just step in there and tell them what needs to be done. And I feel like I mean, with Nubsy, I don't know how much something like that would be happening. I'm sure that he's a great coach. You know, I'm sure that strategy-wise and breaking down film, he probably knows what he's doing. Um, yeah. But, I, but like you said, like Octane Karma, you know, how much – if you have Karma on your team, somebody that's won three rings, you know, how how much do you, how much do you push there and how much does he accept it? So I think with Seattle, they have all the talent – in the world they have the talent to win somebody's just yeah. got to get it out of them yeah what's up dan uh sorry for not i i know i was supposed to message you um and tell you when we were uh when i was going live my bad ah uh, that's a good question can anybody else answer that who's or maybe you know icon who is on the bench for seattle i don't i don't even know um, oh, wait. it's uh it's i just followed them and they called me back on twitter um isn't it like um uh, dang it. This Pander is- and Proto, is that right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Pander and Proto. Um so I um yeah, I I I think Seattle is going to have a good year. They just need to work on search and destroy and they'll get there. It's just going to be uh it's going to take them some time um to get there. So, um all right, let's move on from favorite moment or match to unexpected result. Uh, and we're gonna and you guys can also put this in. Yeah, it's very early, Junkhead. Let's you guys can put this in the chat. Biggest letdown um, and biggest upset, like kind of biggest surprise victory and biggest letdown. But before I go there, I'm actually going to we're gonna take a literally like one minute break, um, and we'll be. Uh, right back, guys. Hey, I'm still here. I'm just running to the bathroom. No problem. I'll be right back. You grab too many cheese dogs. You grab too many? There's only another pack. Oh, All right, I'm back. All good. Uh, switch over. All right. Um, thank you for letting me take a break to go to the bathroom. 
LA being a surprise, Seattle was my personal letdown just because Carmen's my favorite player, GG's. And I just feel like those are two teams that should beat with that kind of, you're saying, you're talking about LA Optic? Is that what you're talking about? Um, and then Paris domination, Kismet, Kismet freaking. I'm going to find his stats, guys, because that dude fried. Um, but I'm, I'm going to let you start, uh, Icon. Um, what was your biggest surprise and biggest uh, letdown? Uh, or biggest letdown, biggest surprise, however you want to say it. So this was just kind of a, a, I don't know, like my small moment to shine is that I just didn't see, I didn't see Shotzi and Illy performing well. Just because as when I, when I went into this, I, I got roasted on my channel for calling a 3-1 for Chicago. So a 3-1 Chicago over Dallas. And I just, I, I just couldn't imagine Illy and Shotzi stepping up and playing well. It's the launch of a brand new league. It's the first time they've been in this scenario. I just felt that Chicago was going to be dominant in that regards. So, right. um, I don't know. That's one that I, I just, I think I pegged fairly well. But in terms of my 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 biggest letdown would probably be New York. Going in, I had New York as in my power rankings, like in that six to seven range. And now it's 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 early for everybody, but in terms of respawns, they went one and four. And the one map that they won was the most dominant map that we've probably saw all weekend. That map that they had against Atlanta when they won that domination map. That that yeah. was probably the most dominant map, single map that we saw all weekend, other than like the six O's in Search and Destroy that we saw every once in a while. But so for them to show what they could do in that domination match against Atlanta, and then to go you know O and four and then O and two in Search the rest of the way, I would say that they were probably my biggest letdown. And then easily for me, um, the biggest surprise for me was Paris. Now going into this, I'll say that. I didn't really know much from Paris just because um, they haven't scrimmed much, right? I've probably, I probably I can't even tell you how many maps of scrims I've watched. So they're just a team okay. that is, yeah, probably. <laughs> but it's just a team that like we didn't really see much. We didn't really know much about. We didn't know their tendencies. And for them to put together what they put together, I thought for sure they were the biggest surprise. Being able to... Um, you know, take the take a three two over OGLA, and then being able to win in that search and destroy at the end too. I mean, just think about it. The first time that a lot of them have been in that scenario, not all of them, but you know, quite a few of them have been in that scenario to take a a, a, a fifth map S and D against OGLA in that sort of scenario. It shows that they're pretty calm, cool, and collected. And then I had for going into this, I had watched London quite a bit. I probably saw. I don't know, 30 maps of the London Royal Ravens play. And I thought that in terms of respawns, they were pretty good. So in that matchup between Paris and London, I thought London was probably going to win that like 3-1, 3-2, and they just got absolutely blown out. So, what um, happened there? I, well, I guess I guess it wasn't blown out. Like the hard point they won by like 35, the search they won by a couple rounds, and then the dom they won by like 20. So um, I guess they weren't blown out, but London, London's first match, so when they played New York, they looked like easily one of those top five teams. And then when they, when, they, when they played Paris the next day or a couple days later, it was completely opposite. So yeah. um, I don't know. They just, they just came out looking a little bit different. In that first matchup against New York, man, even the search and destroy, they were, they were dominant. Scraps and Wuskin, watching them play search and destroy – fried yeah it was it was insanity and then against paris they came out and they just i don't know they looked they looked kind of average so um yeah good on paris because i think imagine coming into a tournament everybody's picking you last in the power rankings all across the internet you're you're last and then being able to perform like that go two oh two and oh on the weekend against pretty good teams uh good for them they were they were for sure my my biggest surprise Okay, so I'm going to address Dallas. I got to do it. And I know you have an opinion about Dallas. is kind of similar to mine, but <laughs> they're talking about it in the chat. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, number one, all of these teams play two matches. There's no bracket. There's no losers. There's no losers rounds. There's no getting to play other teams to see where you actually compare. Yep. The number one question I have, if anyone is going to say that Dallas just went from number two to number 12, 
if you really see them that way in power rankings, which are rankings of where you think a team is going to land at the end of things, not kind of their not their standings, but if you look at power rankings and people that are going to put Dallas way at the bottom, only thing I would say is name a team other than Chicago and Face because that's the two teams they played that would not lose to Chicago and Face. Like we now, talked about that a little bit earlier. Yep. The, the three the three zero was a little bit you know. I mean, that was unfortunate. I thought Dallas was going to put up a better fight. Even Priest has said that in his interview, like he thought Dallas would put up a better fight. But in my opinion, I went into this saying, Dallas is going to leave this 0-2. Scump and formal, when you have fire in Stump's veins, there's nothing stopping this guy. And they wanted to beat Krim so bad, it didn't matter if Krim had all of Faze up on the stage with him. Chicago would have won. And I know that sounds crazy, but that's how badly they wanted to win. And and still, at this point in his career, Scump is like LeBron. He can just find superhuman strength and go crazy, you know, when necessary. And so I can't really lower Dallas way too much while looking at them uh, from playing the best two teams, the obvious best two teams in the game. Now... I definitely thought Dallas was number two, and now I wouldn't have them number two in power rankings for sure. There's no way I'd put them number two over Chicago. I wouldn't do that. Um, but I also – I'm not judging them as harshly as everyone else. Now, of course, this is the same fan base that anytime anyone talks against the green wall, they would go crazy, even if it was true. Even when Optic was losing, there was people tweeting how great Optic was in the chat you know, on streams and on Twitter. There's people tweeting about, oh, Optic is so amazing and they're so good. And it's like, well, no, they're losing to everybody. Like they, they're, these are some of the worst placements we've ever, like World War II, like these are some of the worst placements we've ever seen them have. And people are like, yeah, but they're the goats. Um, and so of course we have, an, uh, we have a contingency of people that are going to flame Optic Gaming, no matter what, they're gonna flame Dallas because Krim is a villain. However, I will say, that Dallas has put together one of the best rosters this year, in my opinion. I think Hastro did a very good job. Um, I think he got great leadership. He got great young talent. And for the long term of 2020, that's a good roster. And they have a lot of potential. And that's just my opinion. I know your opinion as well. Um, well, yeah, well Envoy, Envoy is a beast. I'm not saying, now, let me, before you talk, yep. I'm not saying Chicago is not good, guys. Like, don't get me wrong. Chicago is a like that is a goat roster, great team. Uh, Envoy is going to continue to to fry this year and get better and better and better. And you know, Icon was telling me earlier before the show he thinks this is going to be a breakout year for Envoy. He's going to be well known because people don't even know how talented he is yet. So I'll let you talk about the Dallas thing. Well, yeah. Well, here's the thing. When I made my predictions. My predictions were based on just the here and now. And I even said in some of those videos that if I was making these predictions five months down the road, it'd probably be a little bit different because there wouldn't be quite the nerves and whatnot from some of the younger players from Dallas. But just all you have to do is just run through run through the rosters. So Scump, world champ, unfazed. Formal, world champ. Arcides, world champ. You know, gunless. Gunless, you know, maybe doesn't, you know, he's not to the heights of the other threes in terms of success, but he's a proven player that doesn't get phased by anything and he's been there before. And Envoy. So Envoy's like the newbie for for Chicago. But yeah. look at Envoy was probably MVP last year had Simp and Simp's team not had the success that they had. So Envoy, right. even though he's young, he just turned 20, he's been proven. Whereas if you look at Dallas, Clayster, Krim, Huke, Proven, Ilian, Shotzi, you don't know what you have with them. Now, uh, you play online in the comfort of their own home and, and they fry and they're fantastic and whatnot, but it's a whole different story when you're sitting in front of, you know, however many people were at the event and 100,000 people online. It's just, it's totally different. So I, I, I think Dallas is going to get there. That's something where if you put yourself in that situation enough, you're going to learn from it. And it'll just become yeah. normal. But for now, those are some growing pains that I think Dallas is going to have to get through. They're going to have to what? 
they're they're just going to have to get through those growing pains for Dallas. Um, I agree. I think uh, your voice might have cut out, but I think you're still there. So, um, my biggest thank you for all the follows, guys. I see him coming through. I'll call him out in a minute. Um, my biggest surprise I'm gonna was this. Um, I did not expect methods to fry like he fried against Seattle, like 1.4 in hard point, 1.33 in S and D 1.32 in Dom. This dude just went off. He went crazy. Um, I was looking at stats and I did not expect to see this. I was like, wait, what the heck? I was like, oh my jeez. <laughs> um, and Toronto is the team that probably will use their substitutes. If anybody uses their substitutes, it'll be Toronto. They have a legitimate team of people that could play. Uh, Methods was the clear number one player. I think Icon was saying that earlier. Uh, Methods was the clear number one player on their team. Um, and he did a great job. Um, my biggest surprise, uh, I guess... Hey, can you turn that down? Turn back. Uh... Sorry, guys, I asked my son to turn down his iPad. <laughs> uh, my biggest surprise um, and letdown, I guess, was I got to say Paris as well. I honestly did not see them winning both of those matches. I didn't see them winning either one. I did not have them beaten Optic Gaming. Um, I think they talked a little too much mess after that one. But then when they beat London, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, you guys are um, You guys are legit. And yeah, for sure. E e because every team isn't going to be it every weekend, which is unfortunate. Um, they they even have potential of kind of placing top four at a couple of these events, just depending on what mix. Like, if you look at the bracket for London, um, the way that the brackets are going to work out for London, um, it's... I, I'm, I'm... I actually just want to pull it up. So the the way that the bracket is going to work out for London, let's just put it on the screen. Before, but so, as you're pulling that up, I, let me let me say something real quick about methods. So the nice thing about Toronto, like you talked about, is that they have essentially ten people on their roster. So think about where they fried, right? Think about where they succeeded. They were three and zero in search, and that's why they were able to win that match against Seattle. But if you look at their response. Their respawns, nobody performed. If you go look at the stats, in terms of their respawn KDs, Methods was the only one that was above one. So I, I like that you have his stats up there. Um, he was he was definitely a surprise. But then when you go look at his S at the SND stats, almost everybody from Toronto was about was above one. So that kind of goes into their uh, team makeup a little bit to where if you have five extra subs and you can play actual 5v5 matches against each other in-house and you can talk about those strats and draw them up, where they're missing is that they don't quite have the SMG talent, the slaying power that the other teams have. But, nice. but having somebody like methods where you can just kind of rely on and somebody you can count on. All they have to do is just, just develop that slaying power and they're going to be pretty, they're going to be a good team. Just, I don't know, probably top half of the power rankings. I know we'll talk about those later, but yeah, um, yeah they're, they were surprised for sure. So here's the deal. Um, and it still stands. I, I think Rambo or big timer was one of the first ones to say it. S and D wins championships. Mm -hmm. um, it still does. If you can win your S and D's, um, you know, yeah, you you technically, you know, could get beat if you don't pick up one of the. But if you can pick up one respawn <laughs> and win your S and D's, you're good. Which and is which is why nobody's gonna beat Atlanta, and which is why which is why you can't count out you can't count out Dallas. You can't exactly. account out Dallas because they're exactly. also so good at search and destroy. Yeah. If they got to play search against a team that wasn't <laughs> wanting to beat the mess out of them, that basically wasn't Chicago or Atlanta, we would have really seen them shine even more in search. I mean, we got to see a little bit of it versus Chicago, but I mean, I how does Atlanta lose? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. 
<laughs> it's gonna be. Difficult. I re- but I, I really go ahead. I do feel like it's the two teams. I think that Atlanta and Chicago have distanced themselves from everybody else. Uh, then there's a lot of teams kind of like in that three through ten, three through eleven range. Um, but yeah. yeah, the thing with Chicago is that I thought they would be better in search and destroy, but that second map against Dallas for Chicago, that was, that was kind of pathetic. I mean, they got absolutely ran through by Dallas. So yeah. that's going to be their Achilles yeah. heel. Now against OGLA on the second, on the second day, they took that six, two and it was pretty easy, but yeah, we'll, we'll see if they're able to develop that. Go ahead. I, I, I see what you have up on well, screen here. I like it. As other teams get better. Um, the, here's the thing. As other teams get better, Chicago's going to have to continue to get better at search um, because teams like Seattle will get better at search. Um, Chicago's going to have to get better at search because other teams are going to get better at search. New York is going to get better at search. But FaZe has such a gap on the competition in Search and Destroy right now because these guys have all played with each other for like two years in, in little off you know online tournaments and stuff and Simps kind of I mean, he's proved he's such a goat, but then, I mean, he wasn't even kind of number one on his team, you know? And so, I mean, if you look at those search and destroy stats, like you said, there's a 17, a 10, like these guys just fried in search and they, and they didn't fry against like little teams that would be easy to beat. Like, no. yeah, I thought they were going to win, but I thought it'd be like six, three, six, two, six, four, even not six, oh, six, oh, if like, we're, that was. If, if we're talking about Search and Destroy in specific, there's one team where Search and Destroy alone held them up, and that's the Los Angeles Gorillas. They were 3-0 and in Search and Destroy other than that forfeit. So at the end of the day, they were 2-1, and but they were 3-0. and Your yeah. boys from Seattle were 0-4. And, yeah. and so just imagine Minnesota, they were, they were really high. They were fourth on my power rankings. They were five and one in respawns over the weekend, but they were zero and two in search. Now they were one and one because of that forfeit. But if yeah. they can develop a search game, Minnesota's really freaking good. And as you mentioned, the Ultra did not lose a search this weekend. Yep, they were three and zero. And and so, uh, search and destroy is important. It, it there's teams that went home without a win because because they didn't play it well enough, and there's teams that went home. Because they did a good job in it, you know, or even who was it that was, um, uh, it wasn't phase. Was it the Paris versus London where Paris just like bullied them in search? I forget what the score of that match was. Um, uh, it was but, six, it was six, four Paris versus London. Yeah. But it, it, I'll say that even though it was six, four, it was kind of like, cause wasn't it a comeback? Was that the one where it was like, they were down and then they won like four or five rounds in a row it might have been i don't I, remember off the time i missed head. the end of, yeah i missed the end of that one unfortunately because i think that was when the kobe bryant thing happened and i just stopped watching yeah um, i feel you yeah it was, it was unfortunate and so you thought the rocker were gonna get smashed there the pros were having them as top four team yeah i had them at four for sure all pros had them in the top four so what i have on the screen is the london groups and i think it's very interesting how in london number one the, the suckiest thing is phase is not going to be there this that is the that is one of the most unfortunate things about this event is phase is not going to be there. And I guarantee you people that are not on Twitter and don't pull up the website are not going to pay attention. And they're going to be like, when does phase play? Like the old school, when does optic play? When does phase play? When am I going to see simp? And people are going to be like, Oh, um, they're not actually playing this weekend. I think it's very interesting the way this is divided where you have Toronto, London, New York, and Paris. And you really only have one North American team. I know Toronto is kind of, you know, I mean, right. part of North America, but it's, you know, a different country. But it's like, really, New York is the only team over there that we're of, that has like a boosting roster that we're used to seeing all the time. And then all of the others, we're talking about world championships, four rings, two rings, two rings, like all of them are on one side of this. You've got Aches and you've got Skump and you've got Krim and you've got Karma and you've everybody is on that side. And what that means is, Two of those teams on that left side in Group A are not going to go into the final bracket, and we're only going to get to see them play twice again. And then on Group B, two of those teams aren't going through. Which honestly, well, most of us go ahead. It just at least in the winners' finals, there is a losers' bracket. 
No, but I'm saying the way that so like if Chicago loses, right? They go down to the losers bracket, and then if they win, oh, I see what you're saying. They would they mean? would play the other team on the left side of the bracket. Right. So yep, because I got you. Only only um, because two of these teams on each of the sides are not going to the final bracket. Yeah. And so one of the things that I don't remember who it was that said this, but they were like 20 something million dollars is a lot of money to pay to have your team get knocked out of the bracket early. So maybe that's why it is this way. But if I'm, if I'm, let's say I'm Seattle and I don't learn search and I lose to Dallas, I go to the losers bracket and I lose to the gorillas because they know how to play search better than me. Mm -hmm. And I now just played two matches and I'm out of the event. That sucks. As an investor, as someone who's who's got their brand on their jersey, I'm like, hey, the broadcast was on for two more days, but my guys are already out. You know, so it's like, I, uh, and you know, I think they're fitting it into two days a weekend, which means I think somebody did the math, and there's got to be like seven matches on the first day. Um, so of course we're going to be behind in time, and it's going to go till twelve o'clock at night, and all this kind of. Uh... Stuff. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. The way they have these brackets, I'm like, how did they group these together? Why wouldn't they have put, like, Chicago in Group B and Dallas in Group A? That, that's just in my brain. Automatically, I would want those two teams in the final bracket at, from a viewership standpoint. Because if for some reason Chicago doesn't make it, and well, I, I don't think both of them wouldn't make it, but they're going to play each other if they beat those two teams. You're going to have Dallas and Chicago knock one of the other ones to the loser's bracket and potentially be out. And so it's a very because you just have to win two and then you get to go to the final the final bracket, which I should have put on the screen, but I don't have it on there. So it's going to be interesting. Um, Paris versus New York is going to be interesting because New York's going to want to do a lot. Um, why don't since we have this on the screen, if you had to pick right now, Icon, who would you uh, have with matches? Uh, well, if I had to pick, I, I would probably. In in Group B, I, now see that's the thing. After that launch weekend, bef if I was to pick this before that launch weekend, I would have New York winning that matchup with Paris. But Paris was so dominant with the results of that launch weekend, I would probably go Paris and then London. I don't know why I still have so much faith in London, but I do. Just from watching them scrim over like the last four or five weeks, I just feel like they've been playing really well. So probably Paris and London in Group B. And then who knows? Maybe since that's in EU, maybe that would be a little bit different. You know, it's kind of a home match, so maybe that matchup, maybe London would come out of that. Um, but the left side, I, I'm sorry, I hate to rag on your boys, but I, I I feel Dallas and Chicago. I don't see how Seattle. So think about it. it C yeah. Seattle is gonna lose those two those two search and destroy matchups. They'll lose to all three of those teams probably because of search. In they search, right? So even if Seattle was one of the most dominant hard point teams that existed. You know, like they're still going to drop. All you have to do is get lucky in one of those respawns, and you're probably going to beat Seattle because of the searches. So, on the left side, obviously, I'd probably go Dallas, Chicago, and I don't see how at this point in time you take Dallas over Chicago just off of the results from that first launch weekend. So, if I had to pick a final, I don't know, Chicago, London, then I think that would be an easy wrap. I think whoever makes it out of that so, left side is going to take the, the whoever's on the right. So, here's the challenge, though. You're the home team, right? Yeah. You're London. You get beat by Toronto. You go into the loser's bracket and then get beat by Paris. Yeah, I don't know. Team, and you don't even play on the next day. Like, how How does that event go? Like, <laughs> I just don't. I don't that's see. It's hard to think about. Yeah, I don't. You know, like, I don't see London losing the respawns to Toronto. No, no, no. I'm, here's the deal. I don't either. But, but I didn't if it happens. <laughs> Seattle, technically, but they won the searches. But if it happens, so yeah. think about some of the teams that we don't see. Like, what if you're Seattle and, and and they don't fix their search? Do they make it out of the group stage? Like, that's – and they're the and when they're the home team, that's got to be – that's that's rough to think about. I will that, say – I will but, say that I'm, I'm, I'm pumped to see the crowd that comes in London. Oh my god! I I just can't wait. Bro. I feel like they're so just charismatic with like their home teams. I I can't wait to see it. I'm pumped to see it. It is going to. Oh yeah, there will be drinking allowed. You already know times I'm. Tim's 
Um, and and Benson will be leading it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Benson was saying on the air, he was like, "Yeah, drink and back," and it's like, weren't, weren't you still casting? <laughs> like, um, they're and I'm not saying Benson's like an alcoholic or anything. Don't get it twisted. But I'm saying, yeah. um, Benson loves to have fun. Yeah, of course. He loves to rile up that London crowd, and that will be one of. And that's where Scraps and Weskins will probably fry out. And they're so good. That final bracket because they're going to have their home crowd just going crazy behind them. Um, but on the other hand, will it be too much? You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's not like these are like, it's not like it's LeBron James feeding off the energy of his home crowd. You know, I mean, ultimately, this is like a new thing. So will that pressure be too much? Even though those are proven guys, right? They're all pretty proven. I don't know. I I mean, only time will tell. That's what's so that's what's so awesome about this is that we can watch this happen and develop over time. Well, and we're watching the teams develop over time. We're watching. um, Yeah. Okay, so we're going to look at some stats uh, real quick, guys. Hey, what's up, Landon? Uh, we're gonna look at some stats, guys. And Icon, what do you want to start with? Uh, we can do Dom. We can do top overall stats. We can do a, uh, hard point, hill time. Um, we can I, look at simp. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, the here's it, it kind of coincides with what we've already talked about. But to begin with, here the stats that stick out the most are really just. The search and destroy stats for for Atlanta because we've never seen anything like that, and I doubt that we ever will again. And then when earlier when we were talking about how teams, you know, some teams did well, some teams didn't do so hot. When you're going through and you're looking at like for Toronto for an example, you can see why they struggled so much in respawn just because you know in terms of respawns, everybody had a sub one KD except for methods. So I don't know if there's any like you know, one person to just call out. But with what we've already talked about, we can just see how it correlates. And then even like New York. So like for New York, for example, I, I, again, I had them like fifth or sixth in my power rankings, but with New York, everybody's respawn KD was negative. Everybody's hard point KD was negative. Everybody's SND and domination. They, so everybody's SND KD was negative. Accuracy had a point two for SND. So like, I, I don't know if like, you know, calling out individual people or whatever is the way to go. I just think that if you look at the stats as a whole, you can tell why some teams didn't. I mean, it's it's in the stats. It's crystal clear why some teams right. struggled at different things and some teams didn't. Yeah, I uh, I kind of have the slideshow going right now with just kind of all of them. Um, and you guys can kind of look them over and call out what you want to call out. Um I thought it was interesting that uh, Octane had the top hill time of the event. Um, we talked about that earlier too. Yeah, I I thought that was really interesting. Kind of what I captured, guys, the, the stats I wanted to share. And by the way, calling out my dude Cam Allen, follow him on Twitter. All of these stats he gives out for free. He has a document that's pinned to his tweet of all of the stats of every player. Simp fried out of his mind, was the GOAT, was the MVP. It's kind of unarguable, um, especially after he said he had a bad dom. You know, I'm like, what? <laughs> you call that bad? Like, hmm. and then he, he just goes off, you know, in the final map, and uh, that was. I mean, it was, it was like watching, honestly, and 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 I'm not just throwing shade towards like New York and and Dallas, but it was kind of like watching uh, the varsity team play the freshman team, watching Phase uh, play against, and we're talking about playing against some of the best players we've seen on the sticks like and the shade was thrown by aches um at uh at uh everybody because that's what he does no no no. (laughs) yeah but he threw shade at um oh my gosh what's his name bobble john bobble what's his uh gamer tag why am i forgetting it he used to be a pro player he's their coach of new york um Oh my, this is going to kill me. They're going to type it in the chat and I'm going to feel like an idiot. Um, Coach of New York, oh. you said? Yeah. Oh, Revin? Well, I guess yeah, yeah, Revin. Revin, Revin. Yeah, his name is just Bobble now. Maybe that's why. Um, yes, Revin. Thank you, Landon. <laughs> um, so he threw shade at Revin because, you know, Maven tweeted, like, I can't believe 
I casted New York losing or dropping donuts and attached responded and said, well, when they knew what they were doing and we had no strats and no idea. And then of course, Aix is like, I can't believe this. And he, he asks, you know, Revan and he's like, you didn't prepare them. And I'm like, Oh, yikes. You know, that's, I mean, but coaches matter in my opinion. And why, and I mean, that is a good question. Why didn't New York have any strats for the opening event where they were going to get 10 or 20 points and they knew they were playing one of the best S and D teams in the game. Well, 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 just, just think about it. I mean, it's no secret that everybody kind of hides their S and D strats, but now even after just one, just one weekend, everybody's got all these VODs they can go back and watch. You can see exactly what certain teams have done on certain matches just by following the mini maps in the bottom left-hand corner. So even if you're not all that well prepared for the first event now, I mean, a lot of what what has happened is, is out there in the open. Like they can go and it's just like any other sport, right? If you're talking football or basketball, everything's a copycat league. So if you're going out and you're, and you're watching what, what Atlanta did in search and destroy, I mean, they went 12 0 on the weekend. So if you're just going to tune in to, to, to their scrims and see what they did, you can easily pick up on just from watching the mini map where somebody went, where the, you know, where the decisive kills happen, stuff like that. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I I mean, but you, if you watch the campaign, the Huntsman admitted like on camera during the show that they were talking about Dallas's strats because they admitted that Dallas was good. They were like, well, Dallas does this. And when Dallas plays this map, they go this way and they do that. Like they, like everybody did that in world war two when TK was somehow frying everybody at the beginning, it was like, well, what are they doing that we're not doing? You know? Um, so I, I agree with you and, and, but I, I wonder why if a team like Dallas, that was, kind of the arguable number one going into the event um if they are streaming all the time and you can when you scrim them you can you know but because i would think new york scrim dallas i mean I, I don't know maybe they didn't but um but you can't go in with no strats you know like that just is kind of awkward to me i guess um, yeah and some of these teams that have an academy team that helps too I mean, if you're getting that's true if you're getting really good that's scrims true. against teams that you have in-house I mean, a lot of it is just how much have you played? It's just like any other strat. The more you play, the better sound your scrim- your, your your strategy gets. So, um, I don't know. Maybe that's something that Chicago could, could could learn from. Pick up an academy team and then scrim them and stuff like S and D. Pick up these S and D stars and then if you can develop that, if Chicago develops an S and D kind of similar to where the other top teams are, Atlanta, Dallas, yeah. even though they got smacked, I mean. I already think Atlanta and Chicago are far above everybody else, but you develop that now, all of a sudden, it's a dis- different ball game. Well, but here's the deal, and if it's true, and somebody in the chat earlier said, based on Clayster's tweets, that Atlanta and Dallas are at the same event only four out of the twelve events, which is crazy. Um, maybe Chicago, or no, I'm thinking, oh, is it is it Atlanta and Dallas or Chicago? Atlanta. I don't remember what the tweet was. Chicago, Atlanta. So if Chicago and Atlanta are only at the same event four times, then maybe you don't need to learn because you'll just win all the ones they're not at. Like, I don't know. But you want to win champs, so, you know, you got to develop and and get as as good as you can. There's Um, a... um, There's there's a massive kind of rant from from Aches right now on Twitter. It's kind of like this stuff going on that all my friends are texting me about. But... Like coming up here, it says that Chicago and Atlanta won't ever be placed in the same group at any of eight of 12 tournaments that they compete at. So it almost feels like if Aches said that, Aches tweeted that. So if, if, if you're thinking about competitive integrity, basically what he's saying is that he's ta- they're taking the two biggest brands and they're separating them on different sides of the bracket so that one of them or potentially both of them will make a finals and then now think about the viewership that that tournament would have. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of some interesting drama that's going on at the moment. No, I'm looking at it. Dang. Patty P is Patty P, man. It's yeah. going to be Patty P. All right, we're <laughs> going to take another quick break, guys. <laughs> um, we're going to take a quick break and uh, then we're going to get into some team by team and close out with uh, power rankings and questions from you guys. So we'll be right back in a minute. I'm going to the bathroom. I'll be right back. All good.
Uh, all right, I'm back. All right, all good. Um, so let me call out the, uh, oh, what's the good point? Aix does have a point. Yes, he does. Uh, is what I said once the new format was announced, seeing for groups can't be handpicked. Yeah, see, that's unfortunate, Lando. Um, and I'll say that one of the other unfortunate aspects um, is in Slack, I was watching his stream this morning. He was talking about all of this, and he just said, um, you know, how do you call yourself number one if the best team isn't, you know, if every team isn't at every event? You can't really call yourself number one. Um, I do want to call out the follows real quick that I haven't called out because I've got a million and I want to make sure I recognize you guys. Um, okay. Senville, Proper, Men's, Matt, uh, I, Matthias, Villas, Villas, Fastballer, Creative on the Sticks, Alon, Galicia, Shelves, Ball, Mike, Lal, Sip, Mucus, I don't know how to say that, Infinite, and Tim Zime. <laughs> Thank you guys all for the follows. Um, and you can subscribe, you can donate, you can subscribe to my YouTube down below. Uh, if I get this uh, off the screen, you guys can also uh, hit up my dude Icon, the guy that you guys hear talking. He's amazing, he makes great YouTube videos, breaks down gameplay very, very, very well. He'll probably be casting eventually if 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 he wants to not teach middle school. <laughs> um, <laughs> one thing, one thing I'll say real quick before we move on, yeah, just ahead. just to land in to Landon's point over there is that even though those teams like won't be playing initially, it does seem like, like if we look at the setup for this, for this London event that's coming, I mean, we talked about it a little bit ago, but all of those major teams are on one side of the bracket. So I, 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 I mean, yeah, you, you obviously it, it, in a way, it does seem like it's handpicked, but in a way, it doesn't. Like this one, obviously, if anybody's going for some sort of like viewership, favorship, you wouldn't put those four teams on the same side of the bracket. You would have them spread know. out. No. So You're I not mean, aches and cream and scump and all them on the same. Yeah, no. You right. So is so did this? You know, so with Atlanta and Chicago being on opposite sides of the bracket. Is that by chance or what's happening? This, the picture that you have up on screen right now, kind of shows that, you know, it, it's kind of some evidence against what he's saying. So, I don't know. Who knows? But it, we're good to move on. <laughs> no, I, bro, it, it is. Um, it, it's there's not a lot of clarity around it, around what we're doing. And and why and why they're doing it, and I guess um, Landon says this this bracket has changed three different times is my worry, and it, maybe it'll change again, Landon, because when they recognize like, hey, if you guys want viewers on day two, you might not want to make the possibility of there being no aches who, of course, is going to be some people are going to want to watch because he's a villain and he's already made that obvious. Um, you might want to make sure there's there's not going to be no karma or maybe no scump and his team or maybe no crim and his team like you don't want to put all of them on the same side of the bracket that just seems well awkward to me well, um, but stuff, maybe they want to make sure that london makes it through <laughs> you know like well, i don't know i don't know stuff like this has been solved in traditional sports forever all you have to do is just come out with the power rankings seat everybody through rank and then you know one will play eight and two will play seven and the way that traditional sports has done it forever you have to admit power rankings right now is very tough well for us because yeah we have the middle of the bracket like top three and bottom three maybe maybe is but the rest of the bracket or the rest of the teams like fitting the other what is it the other six teams they could literally go back and forth and all around and i think you know speaking to the power rankings i kind of got a little frustrated about how much the power rankings were being referred to um on agreed and by players i was just like and and i I said a personal message in my little video towards Paris because I was like, what did you expect? Like, honestly, if I hadn't seen you play and I'm comparing based off of just like championships and people that I know and people that I've seen and I happen to put you at the bottom, I'm putting you number 12th in the world. Not number, like, I know you, I know it sucks. Like who would want to be rated 12th, right? But, and then you beat Optic and you're like, yeah, that's right. You guys were wrong. And I'm like, I mean, a lot of like simp said on the podcast that optic was the worst team he scrimped. 
Like, you know, so right. I, I, I think that the power rankings were getting taken way too seriously. And what you do when you do that is you create a, a, an environment where someone like Nameless is never going to do power rankings again. Like, why would you ever want to be the person? That yeah, you're not taking that right? heat anymore. Yeah. Heck no. You get pro players throwing shots at you from the stage, getting mad and seeming literally frustrated that you put them 12th. And I'm like, well, you know, if it makes any sense, I put you 12th out of millions of Call of Duty players. On <laughs> you know, like right. your team is the the 12th ranked team in the world. I'm sorry that you're 12th. You know? Well, if um, I, I think I think a lot of this could have been solved if this I, I know that this launch weekend was just kind of to kick off everything. But right. had this launch weekend been a big double elimination, yep, the double elimination tournament, a lot of this could have been solved, and a lot of this could have been figured out. So now, going into London next weekend, even though a lot of the teams aren't there, you could have placed them in a in a. It wouldn't be perfect, but it would be a scenario in which you're pretty comfortable with. If this was a double elimination bracket, Dallas would never play the two teams they played in a. Yeah, exactly. They would, have, they would have lost to Chicago and played some other team, and they would have went on a, and then maybe played FaZe in the winners or losers finals. Like, yeah. there's no way that it would have turned out the way it turned out. FaZe would have been waiting in the grand finals for Chicago or Dallas, probably. Like, and you didn't, there, there, there wasn't, and with the new patch, you didn't get enough games in to warm up. Yes, I know everybody scrimmed. I know everyone had to play on the patch. However, um, I do think, Dallas probably was hit really hard. I think Illy and Shotzi were were struck pretty hard by the patch. Um, so I forgot where we were going next. We got off topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go team by team. I'm gonna put the standings uh, up on the screen for you guys. Uh, or not? Nah. Hold up. Uh, give me one second, guys. Standings. Okay. All right. So we're going to go team by team, and then we're going to attempt. I'm scared of this because I was trying to do this earlier, and I couldn't. But you guys in the chat need to help us because we're going to go team by team starting at the bottom. Um, and we're just going to briefly just cover. We'll, we'll make it quick. We're going to talk about um, kind of standout player, player that fell short if someone did, what to work on. And I'm going to let Icon kind of run that part because, you know, when it comes to the gameplay and in-game stuff, he's uh, way more knowledgeable than I am. Um, and then any if they had a supply surprise loss or victory as a team and what we'll do icon to make this kind of go quick if either one of us wants to throw in for both um we can rodney yes the huntsman can beat phase anybody in this league can beat phase but is it going to happen um they'd have to have a bad day and i haven't seen simp have a bad day in uh, forever the last five times i've seen him play i guess um even when they got second, whatever the event was before uh, playoffs, I don't remember what it was, but for third or whatever they got, um, he was still frying. So um, what we can do is we can just switch off teams and then, you know, we can throw in comments if we want. I'm sure it'll take longer than I'm saying anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, but I'll f go ahead. So yeah, let's uh let's just start at the bottom here. Let's talk about New York. Now, again, all of this kind of has like a counterpoint to it because New York was pretty bad, right? I mean, they were probably if you're looking at just KD wise and how they performed, I mean SND KD's point two, point three, point five, point four, point nine. And so if you're talking about Who had like a point two. Uh that would be accuracy. Oh, but no. But if you're talking <laughs> if you're talking about like things they did well, things they did bad, players to point out. I thought Zuma played pretty well. If you're looking at like just some respawn stuff, Zuma had the, the, the highest KD for their team. In fact, he was the only one that was kind of positive throughout the day. So if you're looking at positives, then probably Zuma is the one that stood out for me. But they also had what might be the most impressive map win of the weekend. That domination win against Atlanta, I can't think of a single map that was more impressive than that performance that they had there. So map count one and six, everybody played pretty terrible for New York. But again, it's just it's not big enough for of a sample size to really talk about in terms of power rankings. Now, if we are talking power rankings, I mean, they're also last on mine just because of the performance that they put forward. But if you're just talking about New York as a whole, 
Zuma would probably be a little bit of a bright spot, but I think that they'll get better. I've watched them scrim, I don't know, probably 50 different matches, and this is very, it's very seldom that you actually see them perform like this. So I do think that they'll get better, um, but Zuma was probably a standout, and they definitely have to work on their S&D because the S&D KDs were terrible. Mm -hmm. um, moving on from there, if we're talking about Dallas, if we're talking about Dallas, Crim6 was, for the weekend, he was their best player. In, yeah. in, in hard point, he was the only one that had a KD above one. In SND, he had a 1.22. And think about it. If going into this weekend, you had to say who's going to have the best weekend, you're probably not going to say Crim, right? You're probably going to pick one of those other four players, if we're being honest. But again, if you're just lining this up, how much actually how much weight do you actually put into this i don't know because they played the two best teams so that's why i know we've been back to this so much but i just wish it would have been a tournament because if they get knocked by chicago i want to see them play london or i want to see them play toronto or even seattle somebody like that because i think that their snd is so good even though they didn't really show it this weekend except for that match against chicago that snd against mm -hmm. chicago they were by far the dominant team in that snd but yeah. if we're talking about good players, bad players, I, Krim was the best. And then Ily and Shotzi, I mean, I, I think it might have just been a little bit of nerves and whatnot playing in. But Shotzi was definitely their worst. And if they want to have any sort of success moving forward, Shotzi has to play better. What are your, yeah. what are your thoughts on those and, two teams? Well, so Redneck, and this is where name me a team that would have done better. Like this, this, like people that are saying they played the two best teams poorly. Um, I think they played not to their strengths in general. Like whoever they played, I don't think Dallas played as good as they could have played. Um, the first, the hard point um, it, against Phase was close. It went down to the final hard point where there was a random spawn, like most of the games that we watched hmm. this weekend, and two Phase players spawned in the back of the cave. Priesta jumped on the hard point, held it down, and it was over. Um, I think it was like 230-something to 250. And, um, yeah, they got smoked in the S&D, but who didn't by FaZe? Yeah. Like you know, and who wouldn't have? Who would FaZe not have embarrassed like that, honestly? Yeah, like Maybe like, Chicago, but the point stands. Maybe. But we're saying maybe to that. Yeah. Because we didn't expect them to do what they did to Dallas. Dallas beat Chicago, right? So. And, and the problem is we that, don't know. There's no way of telling right no now. Idea. We don't. We we. They didn't play enough matches to tell us anything. The Dom was close in the first half, and then Phase took over the second half. You know, I I like. I really think that we have not seen the best of Dallas. I think that the younger guys were too impacted, maybe by the change, um, at the last minute. They had practiced, and they were the best team on the old patch. And yes, everybody played on the new patch, but on the old patch that was days before uh, they were the best team so I, I honestly right now don't know like what I, I think they will get better I, I I just really don't see that team staying at this point if if this was a tournament like you said I can name five teams that I'm looking at that I would definitely say they would beat yeah and probably they're better in search than Seattle, who couldn't win a search. They would have beat them. I think they would beat Optic. I think they would beat Toronto, um, even though Toronto was good in search, and that's what helped them win a, win one of their matches. I think they would beat the Gorillas. I mean, look at as we go up. I think they would beat the Ravens. I almost think they would beat everyone except for Chicago and Faze, and maybe Paris could come out with a miracle because what they did this weekend was just really good, and I can't throw shade at them for actually, you know convincing me that they did better um i would say work on as a team they know what they need to work um playing on the new patch and just changing their strategies because they had strategies set up for the way they've been playing online and the way they've been playing didn't work um watching the way phase played them and, and um i th there was no surprise loss i knew they were gonna lose so i can't yeah so for me Dallas actually ended up where I thought they were going to. Did I think they were going to go one and six in maps? Not at all. Um, I thought they'd be more like three and six or four and six. But 
um, I thought they were going to lose both of their matches. So, um, yep. I wasn't surprised. Agreed. If we're, uh, if, if we're moving up here, we can talk about OGLA next. Um, I, I was shocked, honestly. I, I expected them to lose to Chicago, but that result to Paris, I just, I wouldn't yeah. have, I, I wouldn't have guessed that would have happened there. There's just so many names and there's so much talent still on that OGLA roster. Um, I know I was a little shocked by that. If we're just talking about like the maps in specific, the maps were fairly close, right? So they lost the first hard point to Paris by like 15. They lost the domination to Paris by like 20. And then the search and destroy, they kind of got blown out. It was like a 6-3. Um, but, but still, it just seems like a rotation here, a rotation there, a couple clutch kills here and there. And OGLA easily could have been at least 1-1. One and one. The maps against Chicago were, weren't very impressive at all especially i think that first hard point they lost by like 80 so if you're talking about just optic kenny and dashy played really well and tj and jcap were pretty bad so if you're talking like and, okay so that's what i was waiting for you to say what's that they had um some players that fell short optic just had um in this game you have to help where your where your teammates I mean I guess in every cod but you have to help where your teammates leave gaps and I felt like Dashy had to do that a lot TJ had to get three pieces just to keep the game alive sometimes like you you and these guys are used to playing with players that they can rely on and that's the biggest I will tell you the biggest bonus that FaZe has over everyone else they trust each other because their individual talent is ridiculous any of them can be number one on the map. Any well, that major well, priest, the uh, BZ, like any of them, Celium. People think he's the best in the game. Like any of those players could. And so when they go to their position, you're like, oh, you got it. I don't even have to. No. And even if you die, I'm gonna stay where I'm supposed to be. What I saw from Optic was rotations that may not have been necessary, um, but because, like you said, there was times where Jcap just wasn't holding up and. Um. Yeah, it was tough. Well, look, I, I've broken down. I, I've watched probably ninety or a hundred different matches with Atlanta Phase. I just I watch them all the time, and mm -hmm. like like you were saying, if there's a, an important rotation in hard point, and you see you know a, a red arrow and somebody else going for like a clutch kill that's going to determine spawns and whatnot they just come up with those kills. They just clutch it up and then they get rotations and then now they're going to win that map. Whereas TJ, you know, had a 0.7. Jcap had a 0 0.7. I mean, they're just, when it comes down to you're the person that's rotating and you have to finish that kill and you don't do it. I mean, that's why you are where you are. Whereas if you're looking at Paris, almost everybody's KD was above 1.0. They're respawn KDs. So in that matchup that those two teams had, one team is just slaying a lot more than the other one. There were there were three or four people on Paris that had a KD above the best person from from OGLA. But in terms of stats, when you have five players on the map and there are, there is grunt work, you know there is you're gonna get a grenade thrown at you, but we need you to jump on, you know, um, and try to get a trophy down stuff like that. Um, how much of stats? Of some negative stats, I'll say, because TP used to have really low stats when he played with you know Krim and Karma and and uh, Aches, but but he was he was definitely they needed him. He was needed on the team. Um, how much would you say some of the low stats are a reflection of some of the other low stats? If that makes sense, like maybe somebody's stats are lower because they <clears throat> are trying to make up for their teammates and they're not in the position where they need to be. I guess that's what I'm asking is, is that an accurate assessment of some of these matches or is it just, they were getting out gun? Well, first of all, you brought up TP and TP did like a lot of that grunt work around the hill, but TP is also a fantastic, a phenomenal in-game leader. So even though his his yeah. stats might not have been that great, he's the one that's calling the shots and he's picking up on what other teams are doing and stuff like that. So TP, even though his stats might be so now compare, you know, the typical TP from years past and compare kind of what TJ gives you. Now last year TJ had some incredible matches when he was playing last year in Black Ops 4. 
But yeah. if you're thinking about comparing those two and like doing the grunt work and being the SMGs around the hill and stuff like that, you don't know if you get necessarily the leadership from TJ or from Dashy or, I mean, you know, who's the leader on L- on OGLA? You know, who? Slasher, right? Yeah, it has to be because J- that's not J Cap. That's not who J Cap is. That's not who mm-hmm. Kenny is. Kenny's kind of quiet. Dash, they're all kind of just like quiet, go about their business type of dudes. So it has to be Slasher. And if Slasher has a 0.8 KD for the weekend, you know what I mean? It's just like, where it's do not you. Not a Slasher stat, yeah. Yeah, like where do you find, like, you have to find that somewhere. Now, again, it's early. We haven't seen a tournament with all these people or anything, but. Um, I don't know. We'll we'll see where. So stats. So, so back to your original point. Stats. Ahead, yeah, yeah. Stats for SMGs. That they're not. They're not all that important. I, I, I guess if you're like, especially if you're like the bomb carrier in SND, right? If you're the bomb carrier, then you're going to be putting yourself in precarious situations and whatnot. But um, you usually want to have something that goes along with that, such as like a karma. So if you can do that, that brunt work around the hill, like karma, and you can hold a 1.0 or a 1.1 in, in respawn game types, then now all of a sudden, you know, you're not frying, you're not doing, you're not holding down a 1.5 like Sims doing, but right. you're killing more than you're dying. You're providing some valuable stuff to your teammates. So karma, karma to me played like black ops Two killer in this event and what i mean by saying that is <laughs> um he got almost 70 interactions in some of the hard points and was positive but barely you know it's like 38 and 36 you know and so i like as like as a teammate i'd be like thank you you know like when you can get that many interactions and go positive great we don't want you to get that many interactions if you're going to be like 25 and 47 you know but right. if you can get that many interactions and be a little positive um, of course, I'm going to make Black Ops 2 references, Bird, you know. <laughs> uh, I did want to say something to, to Sart, H. Sart, however you say your name, dude, um, before we go to um, to, to the Surge. Um, dang, they called him J-Crap. That's horrible. Um, um, <laughs> J-Cap is a vocal player. He's going to be vocal in scrims. He's going to be vocal in watching film. Um Jacob has always been a, I am not afraid to speak my mind to any personality you put me with. You put me on Optic with Skump and Nate Shot, I will tell them what needs to be heard. I don't care if it's, like, Jacob since way back in the Optic days, um, he was a player who was not afraid to speak his opinion. And he would say it in a way where, almost not in a parasite type of way, or an aches type of way where he kind of made you feel stupid sometimes, but in a way where... He just was like, I'm right, so listen to me. I know what I'm doing. And when CTF w- is a game mode, he you know, he knows how to play that game. He, it, it, it's not this year, So, uh, but that's why he's in the league. He, he's in the league. Aix is in the league. Clayster's in the league um, because they're proven champions. JCAP has two rigs. Like, why would you not want that person on your team? There's some, there's some kind of something he's got that is going to add to your team. That's the hope, you know, and so um, – and I know I said this to you earlier, Icon, and I know people don't agree with it. He probably might make a good coach, Redneck, maybe. But um, look at the last – I I mean, I, I don't know which champs there wasn't an experienced person on the team where someone that didn't win a championship except for maybe the first one with Barico. But Karma, ever since that one, I think we've always had a champs with someone that's already won a champs, winning champs, I think. I'm just saying that. Um, and that's when it matters. Like you guys were talking about apathy. He gets better. Apathy plays his best at champs. When when there's that much money on the line, some of these guys just like like a J Cap who went two in a row. They just turn up. And if you're recruiting, you're kind of like, well, it's just like NBA teams. They recruit people that are not Vince Carter is not, you know, one of the best players in the league, but he's a GOAT. So why not have him? You know, um, there's some championship pedigree even though he doesn't have one, that he has. There's something that Vince Carter has that they want on the team to teach the young guys. And so that would be my opinion on why you pick up J-Cap. That's just – is Vince Carter in the dunk contest this year? That would be great. Uh, (laughs) Brack is on a a team. Um, He just didn't get played. He was on Toronto. He just – for some reason – and I think Landon, if he's still in the chat, one of the things he said is – I think it was Landon that said he was surprised that he was not starting. Um, All right, we can move on. Sorry. (laughs) 
all good. Um, so if we're moving on, I don't know how much we want to touch on Seattle and Toronto because we hit them really hard when we were talking about. Uh, we can move past them. I'll just say I'm proud of Karma. <clears throat> I'm proud of Methods. Um, I can't really point out who fell short. Um, S and D was just a problem for Seattle. Um, I felt like they were well received by the crowd. I was happy for them. Thank you, Bird, for the sub. Welcome to the kingdom. Appreciate you, man. Um, I just felt like they. I felt like they're going to get better. Um, and Toronto, meme team, and they're accepting that they're the meme team, and I love it. That's all I'll say about those two teams. Yeah. Um, en- enable for Seattle has to be better. I think he had like a .5 SND KD. So for a team that was 0-4 for the weekend in SND, and if Enable has a point, like a point four, point five, somewhere in there. I mean, he just he has to be better. The rest of the team, you know, was was pretty decent. Karma played well. Octane Octane played really well. Octane was by far their best player over the weekend. Um, so yeah, we've touched on Seattle a lot. We touched on Toronto a lot. Toronto, the good thing, just to recap, anybody that might not have been here earlier for Toronto, they were one of the best. S and D teams there, and they were one of the worst respawn teams. So S and D strats can come about when you have basically, essentially, an academy team, right? You have five starters and five people on the bench. So for Toronto, that map count that you're looking at on the right, three and O is from search and destroy, and then one and five is from respawn game types. So yeah, if you're Toronto, uh, methods was tremendous. Methods was great, and everybody else you know, 0. 0.9, 0. 0.8, 0. 0.8, somewhere around there. So um, he needs a little bit of help in terms of uh, in the slaying department from Toronto. Yeah. I, honestly, I feel like I feel like LA, so I feel like the Gorillas and Toronto are basically kind of like the same team at this point in time. Um, essentially, Gorillas were 3-0 and in S&D, even though they had to forfeit that. So they were really 2-1. and They had to forfeit that match against Rocker. Um, but essentially, they're basically the same. They really slayed. They did really well in terms of their um, in terms of search and Are destroy. You gorillas right now. Yeah, talking about gorillas. Yep. Sorry, I was in the chat. Go ahead. No good. No problem. But yeah, gorillas. I mean, they're essentially the same thing as Toronto. They were they played really w- well in search, and then they didn't perform very well in respawns. So, um, right. yeah, of course. Instance. Yeah, of course. So, um, thank you, Bird for the subscription. I didn't mean to like overshadow it, but I was in the middle of talking. I appreciate it. Um, I have a whole bunch of new emotes coming guys. Cause since I passed 20 subscribers, um, I get six now or something like that. And I have someone I already paid them. They're designing brand new emotes for me. You guys will see those soon. Um, also, um, let icon know if you would like to see this more often. I'm trying to convince him to do this once a week, but <laughs> he's a busy man. Um, so, um, I was proud of the gorillas. I honestly, I heard them getting trashed by everybody on every podcast. And if Paris didn't exist, everybody would have seen them as being last. They were 11th or 12th. Now, they're a team that I definitely would have told people, like, excuse me, 11th? We almost beat the team that you had fourth because they beat, they almost beat Minnesota. They kind of should have, but, you know, you're not going to win after you get a map taken away from you. That's just, I mean, you have to have. Yeah, I don't, you know, maybe FaZe could do that, but for that team, that probably was demoralizing. Um, but to go, to, to play as well as they did in the first two maps against Minnesota, um, and I just thought they were a good team. I, I thought they did a lot better than anyone expected. I remember after the first map when they won and Apes was standing up talking about stop talking, uh, <laughs> somebody tweeted, one of the pro players tweeted, Aches is going to love this game. Like, that was what they tweeted immediately. Um, I can see it. And so, yeah, I, I was, I, I don't know. Yes, I agree with you. What you said before the show that Aix was definitely, you know, not their best player and had low stats and, you know, but the, I asked the same question I would about JCap, but even in a bigger way because Aix has taken down some of the best teams in our sport when he never should have in Optic over and over and over at Champs, um, and he won Champs two years ago um, when there's probably there was better teams like there's something about that guy and it's delusional confidence in my opinion that he exudes it doesn't matter how much he loses or how low his stats are he's going to he he honestly believes that he can beat anyone and i guarantee you this year there will be an upset and the gorillas will beat one of the top 3 teams in this game 
that's just I'm just throwing that out there. It'll happen. Yeah, um, we'll, well all be surprised. If be. if we're talking about like performance over the weekend, they played really well in search. Aches himself had probably some of the worst stats there, but his yeah. team <laughs> his team was so good at search, and that's where you're wondering is Aches kind of providing the same thing that a gunless provides, even though he's probably a little bit more cynical and a little bit more vocal than gunless is. Right. You know, gunless even though he can you know be a little harsh on his teammates, but um. You know, I think he. So we were just talking about J Cap. I think Aches provides that role way better than J Cap does. Oh yeah, definitely. I agree. So, and I think I think one of the best wins from the weekend was their win over Florida. I thought Florida was going to be, I don't know, fifth or sixth somewhere, just because they play so fast and and they're just they're just so good from what I've seen in scrims. So I think that Gorilla win over Florida that was a big one. Um, that was a big one. Yeah, Florida, so if they would have won, if they would have beat the Gorillas convincingly, we would be talking about them being the fourth or fifth best team in the game. Yeah, if yeah, for sure. They would probably I can't imagine them and Minnesota would probably be right in the same discussion, yep. right at the same yep. level. Yep. So, um Aches, we've been talking about we've been talking about gorillas. Uh, London, I was London. I was kind of disappointed, if I'm being honest. I thought London was gonna have. I thought London was gonna be similar to Minnesota. I just expected them to. I don't know, just kind of have the same outcomes at this tournament. Um, so with London, if we're talking about just specifically, they looked extremely phenomenal against New York, and they looked. Extremely subpar against Paris, Absolutely. right? Against <laughs> which makes no sense. Think about the maps against New York. They won the hard point by a hundred. They won the S and D six two, and they won the domination by basically a hundred. They looked like goats. They looked like they were like like a team that we way under. Uh, they were undersold. They were underpredicted. Yeah, they, they were. Amazing. They were so good. And watching scraps and Wuskin during that S and D on that first that first day. I mean, they looked like they could easily be in that four spot along with Minnesota. So, um, I don't know. They had. Thanks for the sub. They uh, had back from Boston, Pat. Thank you for the sub. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, you're thank good. You but yeah, they had they had really high highs and really low lows. Um, so I don't know. We'll see where London's at. I can't wait to watch that homestead that they have. I just I think the crowd is going to be awesome. I, I I think the environment. I just I can't wait for that. Um, but in terms of their performance, I don't know. It, it's kind of all over the place. I expected them to be really good. They showed that a little bit. I think Jurd had a little bit of a rough day. If we're talking about just overall KDs, he was probably the lowest performing on their team. Jurd and Rated and S and D were like point five, point six. And then, yeah, and then was getting smashed. On then Saturday. Scraps and Wuskin and in Search and Destroy were one point five, one point six. I mean, they were they were phenomenal. So, I, who knows? But I I think that as we move forward here, I wouldn't be surprised if they came out of that Group B um, when it went to London. The only team over there that I think is really going to challenge them is what we've seen from Paris. Um, so I don't know. It'll be interesting. I think anybody can win that right side of the bracket as it goes out to London. It's gonna be. I think the first two matches are where you're really gonna. New York has to win, in my opinion. They have to win their first match. Um, if New York gets double, basically, if they lose two games in a row and they're out of London, um, people are going to start talking about they need to make a roster change, <laughs> like because they, that's below expectations for this for this team. Um, yeah. This roster. And yeah, I know, but yeah, go ahead. If you're just taking the overall performances from those four teams that are on the right side of that bracket, I mean. Who can you who can you legitimately say right now New York is going to beat? You can't because New York underperformed. Even even Toronto, who was one in five in respawn game types, were phenomenal in search and destroy. Yeah, so if if, if they can take one respawn and then win those searches, I mean, I don't on that right side. I don't see who New York beats. I don't That's know. Tough, bro. But at least they're on the right side. I because if they were on the left side, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but but yeah, imagine imagine switching New York and the Gorillas. If you put Gorillas on the other side, now I think LA probably wins that. Wins that right half of the bracket. And if you put Gorillas on that side, 
I mean, those would be some good matches, man. It would be. Yeah, I All agree. All around that side of the bracket, I'd be. I mean, I'm excited about the left side, but Chicago and Dallas, especially for the teams they're playing, they just look like the clear winners going into the, the upper half of the bracket. Um, yeah, one of them is for sure going through. So, um, which I guess is what we want. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I would. Uh, say the same things about the Ravens. I actually don't have much to say. I was I was very, very, very pleased with their performance on Friday. I was impressed. I was shocked. I'm sorry for New York that they literally got humdinger twice. Like, they just got punched, <laughs> in the and punched in the stomach. And it wasn't by phase in Chicago like Dallas did, where it's like, I mean, they're the best teams in the game. You know, what'd you expect, bro? But I didn't see New York losing both of those matches. Like, I, I of course, saw them losing a phase, but I said – Oh, they could probably pick up a map, which they did. So good job, New York. Um, right. Because like you said, that was probably one of the most impressive turnarounds of the event, you know. And I think Zuma's will just went crazy. He was like, nah, man, I'm not going uh, 0-6. It's just not happening. I'm yep. not being the, the, you know. And, but he could, there's nothing he could do after that. It was, his team just couldn't keep up and um, they'll get better. I, I, they'll get better. And I think they will get better. Um, I just, yeah, the Ravens just versus paris i wanted to see a grudge match i wanted to see i did too i was so pumped for that matches i wanted to see five games and like some of the best matches of this weekend went to game five um there's something about getting to watch another search that just excites me in this game specifically which is a perfect segue for florida the next team on these power rankings florida i Going into this weekend, I could not wait to watch them play because they're so fast and they're so aggressive and they play so well. Um, right. But yeah, they they were like they were probably the only I think they were the only team that took both of their matches to that game five that search and destroy, and one of them they clutched up on. They beat Seattle six zero. I mean, it wasn't really even a competition. And then against L A against the Gorillas, they lost in like a four six fashion, I believe. But if we're talking about Florida, I just I just love watching them play. If we're talking about yep. stats, what Pristini gives you, we touched on this I think a little bit earlier. Everybody was above one in S and D, but what Pristini gives you in search and destroy, he's just one of those really special players that you can get so much from. Like he's only one out of five on the roster, but even him playing so aggressive, he's always just sprinting down lanes in search and destroy. He has no fear whatsoever, and that is so much fun to watch. Like if you're watching that and that's being podcasted, that's like those are matches that I just can't take my eyes off of. It's just so good. Um, in hardpoint, Mox and Skies were phenomenal. They both had like a one point two, one point three somewhere in there. Um, so they were just. They were fantastic, but if you're talking about um, how they played, everything was just kind of average. They won three respawns. They lost three respawns. They won two search. They lost two search. So they're one of the only teams where, like, you know, what do you what do you really get from them? I expected them to be in the – I, but going into this, I thought there was the top three and then next three after them. I thought Florida was in there, and that's where they're at at the moment. Um, but I don't feel super confident with them like how I do some of these other teams. I, what I know from, um, what I, sorry, I was looking at Twitter. What I know from uh, Florida is I'm going to get their best. Um, and that's what I appreciated this weekend is that Florida, they just, they gave me entertaining matches. Like you said, I mean, it just was, they were fun. They're a fun team to watch. And Pristini's in his element, man. He is just out there dancing around, doing moves. You know, there's a gif with him dancing around. Like he, I I really like this team. I do too. They're um, fun. And I'm excited for their homestead. I'm excited for their kind of back and forth with Seattle. I think that'll be good. Like the two, you know, C teams or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Battle of the Tides. Yeah, but to go five maps in both matches, I love it. That's what I want to see. Like, like teams that were six and one, one and six, six and two. I'm like, eh, it was. But agreed. The Mutineers, I loved their matches because it was just like, ooh, who's gonna? Oh, it's last, and, and it was just like, I'm glued to the screen. Now on day one, I honestly, and you guys were talking about domination in the chat, and I told Icon this earlier. I was staring at the ABC at the top of the screen. I couldn't look at it. I didn't know what was going on by watching the players. They were behind. 
like so somebody would get a three piece and then it'd be too late when they switched to them um i couldn't tell what flag they were capping by just watching uh or where they were going or why they were going there or what players were dying so fast it was just like huh and so i just watched the top of the screen and i literally couldn't i couldn't tell which was um i couldn't tell like which team was doing what. So I just watched ABC, 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 ABC. <laughs> and Florida, though, entertaining team. Um, and I was really happy. We got like 20 more minutes. Um, so we got to get to these other teams. No problem. So as we move up here, Paris, we talked a lot about earlier. Um, so Paris, I thought was one of the most impressive teams there. I think with where they started, nobody knew anything about them. Everybody expected them to be 12 out of 12. Um, they probably had, honestly, if we're talking about the most impressive performance, I don't know if there's any teams that were really more impressive than what Paris did. Um, yeah. So Paris, they deserve to be there. I'm excited to see them in London and see if they can continue that or if it was just kind of a fluke. As we move up, Minnesota, I th I thought Minnesota was phenomenal. Um, now, yeah. what's holding Minnesota back is that they're – so in respawns, they were really good. They were 5-1 and one on the weekend in respawns. But even though it says they were one and one, so one and one in S and D, one of those was the forfeit. So they were really zero and two in S and D. If you're talking about just thinking right. about it literally, so they have to improve a little bit there in terms of their S and D strats. But um, can we just talk? I mean, God RX is incredible. Watching him in respawns, he just. In fact, I, I've watched. I've watched a ton of. You know, they always seem to be scrimming Chicago, and it seems like every time those two teams are scrimming, it's just formal complaining about how he cannot kill God RX like over and over again. <laughs> so, so I mean, he's fantastic. Assault is really good. Asim is super good online, um, but he didn't have the best tournament. I think he was sub one in terms of KD. Um, but Minnesota, I think that they're clearly in that upper echelon. I think... Atlanta, Chicago, Minnesota. Uh, then, honestly, I would still, I would still put. I mean, we'll get to our power rankings, but um, okay, Minnesota. So, yeah, I would say for Minnesota, um, Paris. Yes, I was. I, they did great. A lot better than what I thought. Um, Minnesota again, just another fun team to watch. I really that whole first, the 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 game against the Gorillas just. You know, it just didn't turn out well because of the forfeit. Right. Uh, I really wish we would have seen a replay or something. I just, it's unfortunate, and what it created, and the and the, the beef, and and what it. I mean, it created storylines for aches, and when they play, anytime they play Minnesota, it's gonna be some craziness. But yeah. Anyway, that I thought they did. Uh, they showed up. Everybody said they were top four team, and they came out of this third. As we move on, uh, Chicago at number two, um, that's probably where they deserve to be. I thought they were fantastic. Uh, formal and Arcides, that match against Dallas, Arcides probably had, I don't know, I, it's hard to say he had one of the best performances of the weekend just because when you look at what Atlanta did in their first matchup, I mean, who's going to top that? But Arcides, exactly. Arcides and Formal were fantastic. Now, Envoy, I do think that the key, if I had to say, so if I had to say, what's the key to this entire league, I think it's Envoy. I really think whatever he does will determine. So Envoy is just such a stud, and he was so good last year in Black Ops 4. But over the weekend, he was the only one on Chicago that had a sub-1 KD. He really didn't play all that well in Search and Destroy. His hard point yeah. KD, they need him to have like a 1-1, one, 1-2, one, one, somewhere in there. And he was sub one. So if you're talking about like good parts and, and bad parts and whatnot, Envoy really does. If, if he starts playing, if he has a KD like our cities has, I, I mean, those matchups with Atlanta are going to be insane. But if we're talking good and bad, our cities was phenomenal, even though he was kind of bad in he was kind of bad in S and D. And if we're talking about S and D, Scump was phenomenal. Scump was Scump had one of the highest S and D KDs that there was. So if we're just talking about Chicago, Scump was great. Formal was good because he always is. And then the rest of the S and Ds there for Chicago weren't really all that well, which is why they got absolutely smacked by Dallas in that S and D. Um, but 
yeah, if we're just talking about Chicago, I'd like to see Envoy play a little bit better. Um, but yeah, look at that search and destroy KD from Scump that you have on screen right now. I mean, it's just, it's yeah. phenomenal. He, so again, Scump has something to prove. Um, will matters. Skill and will matter. Um, the most skilled team in the league is undeniably phase. Not even a question. Um, sorry for all the Huntsman fans, but right now I, that I've, I've, I haven't seen anything like what these guys are doing. I think they have a, a, Scump on their team. When Scump came into our eSport in 2011 playing against Optic Gaming and won his first event with Aix and TP, um, and I think it was Bobby, um, we had never, like, everybody was like, who's this redheaded kid? And then <laughs> he, I think he won another tournament uh, before switching teams over to Optic, but um, Scump has something to prove. And to drop a 3.6 versus Optic Gaming, that's personal. Yeah, uh, I want to see what Scump does when he plays against, I want to see what this whole team does when it's face. Yeah. Um, that's, I really want to see that. That's the I matchup. Want to see a non, I mean, they basically created a spectacle by making the Huntsmen play Optic and Dallas. Like, what they they created a spectacle. Like, it was, of course, these were going to be some of the most watches, watched matches of the weekend. Right. Um, and Scump went off and he did his best and he fried and his team fried and he gassed him up and he went crazy and he got excited and he stood up and him and Formal were excited and and happy and he said in an interview i can't wait to walk across the stage look tej in the face and say ggs um and he did from a 3-0 yeah um, that I, that that emotion from scump at the end of that dallas match was that was something else yeah he 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 is um a goat i call him the most valuable player in our esport not because he is the best but because he is the most valuable if scump stops playing call of duty we will see the only reason we didn't see a down tick when nate shot playing is because scump kept playing and when scump stops playing we won't see a down tick probably because simp and envoy and people like that will keep playing but yeah scump is scump is one of the most valuable assets that our league has the most valuable owner is hex the most valuable player is probably scump but at, and, but at the moment those younger players don't have the personalities that that a scump and a formal and those close. guys have no. they so have the skill. That's the thing. When when Nate shot left, you still had a really good, a phenomenal personality there with with Scum. The 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 skill is there with some of those young guns from Atlanta and Envoy and stuff like that. But do you have you know all the intangibles that make Scum who he is? Not yet. And I I he's a unique breed, um, but I do think as simp becomes his meteoric rise this year when he becomes one of the most well-known people in our esport just by winning um and being i mean when you beat people the way that phase beat people people are going to watch that over and over and over and over and over and over and replay re like what he did last year when he stood up after those snipes you know the three piece that he got yeah you know like and he stood up and he just and everybody just looked at this and people were just like i mean clayster his whole team was just like now i'll say this <laughs> I hope I, I I understand the animosity between Scump and Formal and all these and these two teams, and so I expected them to do what they did. I did not expect Arcides to sound as uh, I didn't expect him to sound as egotistical or arrogant. I guess I didn't expect that from Arcides and the twins. I've always thought of them as like, you know, we love winning. Um, and what's up, Carnitas? And um, we're just happy to win and we're happy to get to play the game. I felt like a different R cities came out and I feel like some of the, some of what Seth and Matt bring to the table is going to R cities. And, but these guys have had this conversation. Our egos got so big. And then when we started losing and I'm like, be careful, please be careful Huntsman that your egos don't get big again. And then when you lose, even though you're the most followed, most entertaining team on the planet, it doesn't matter to someone like Scump, who is a winner. He wants to win. And when they start losing, if their egos are way up here, there's going to be a deflating. And I just don't want to see that from them. I don't see egos from FaZe. Um, I saw a little bit towards Dallas. Everybody was throwing shade at Dallas this weekend. It was really unfortunate. But I get it. Everybody says they talk mess online. But um, anyway, yeah, we can move I, to the next team. Yeah, I just I think when you see the clips from Arcides, like in that campaign series, he seems so genuine and such, like such a nice guy. It just seemed yeah. like the stuff from him was a little bit forced in that post-game presser. 
Um, I don't know if he was to ever watch this or see this. I just, just keep it real, man. You seem like such a nice person and such a genuine person. Just, just stick with that. Um, I feel like him and Preston still playing together would be great. I just, it was a storyline that I liked, you know? Yep. But I know. So yeah. as we so move on, you start with phase. I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick as you start with phase. All right. So as we go, as we go ahead, we talk about phase real quick. Um, if we were to go through this, I mean, there's only so much that you can really say, right? So in terms of phase, the, the S and D KDs are insanity. I mean, I'm not sure that you will ever see somebody the rest of this, especially in like a tournament style mode. I'm not sure if we'll ever see somebody the rest of the year have a 6.5, a 14, a five S and D KD. Um, so if we're just talking about search and destroy, I think that's where they shine, especially since think about the very first matchup, think about Chicago and Dallas, that matchup that they had that second match that search and destroy. I mean, it looked like Dallas was playing like an am team, the way that they ran through Chicago on that search and destroy. And then you fast forward a couple days and now Dallas plays Atlanta. And if you're talking about their S and D, it looked the exact opposite, Right, so in terms of that, they ended up losing that um, o, the six o. Atlanta didn't lose a single round of search and destroy. None of them were even really contested. It was it was as dominant of a search and destroy as you could have. And then, if we're talking about respawns, the one thing that I'll say in terms of just if we're just talking about their respawns, I've probably I can't tell you how many of these respawns I've broken down of Atlanta phase, but it seems like. Every time you turn around, there's somebody dropping 45, and a lot of times it's Abizi, and that didn't happen here. So Abizi had, he was the one person that his overall KD was a .99, his respawn, his hard point was a .8. So if we're talking about Abizi, somebody that regularly throws up 45 bombs when you're playing scrims, so just think about that. As, as dominant as Atlanta was, what might be their second best player had a very marginal respawn or a very marginal tournament this weekend. So, um, I don't know. Search and destroys. They were fantastic. I don't see how anybody beats them. They're just so good. And that's, that's their background, right They're, They came from being search stars. Their respawns simp had a 1.74 hard point KD 1.74. Like, what? So if, if we're just talking about respawns, I mean, the whole way around, they're just, they deserve to be the number one team until somebody shows that they can beat them three maps in a row, like how New York did. That was the most mind boggling thing of the weekend for me is what New York did to them in that domination. But, um, yeah, I mean, it just, it is what it is. They're, they're so good. They're so talented. Um, I think they're the clear favorite to win every tournament that they're in. And we'll just, we'll have to see if somebody can top them. Um, it looks like a so, tall task, but here's the thing about Atlanta. Um, they will not be, where is the standings? Where is it? Um, oh, it's behind this. I got to move him out of the way. They will not be number one going to Atlanta period. It's not possible. Um, they're probably going to be seven, eight, nine it just depends on how the bracket works out but they will not be number one going into atlanta these standings are going to be weird throughout the season because everybody's not at every event in london the teams that are in london are going to move above phase so chicago's probably going to be above phase at the end of the london event dallas can even go all the way from where they are which is 11th and be above phase all they have to do is win three matches um so if Dallas makes it to the final bracket, and if they get first, I think you get an extra 10 so that you can get 50. So there's going to be teams with 50 points, and FaZe is going to have 20 going into Atlanta. Um, I feel like, to me, they did the right thing by embarrassing the teams they played. Uh, if they would have 3-0 and 3-0'd, um, teams, teams would have had legitimate uh, fear, I guess. I don't know what you want to call it, going into Atlanta. But they're beatable. That's what that's what New York showed everyone. And I yep. know it seems like that doesn't matter, but they are they can lose when they're playing at their absolute best. Now, 
BZ was not playing his best. He said something about his his controller wasn't turning as fast as it normally does. Um, oh, Celium's amazing. It, it, so here's the thing, Vital Monroe. You have to name every player on this team to give people credit. Because Major Maniac, I believe, had the highest search and destroy KD of the weekend with like a 17 or something. So, like... 14, insanity. Four, 14. You, you have to... You have to show love to every single player, to Priesta, to you have to show love to even to Crowder, the coach. Like you have to show love to the entire organization when a team is playing this well, where each individual player is playing their position as well as it can be played. And that's what we see from FaZe. And even when a BZ falls short, they go six and one and just embarrass teams, except they lost in Dom. And what that proved is they can lose in Dom. And so you take that map off of them, you win another, you got to beat them in one of the hard, or I mean, in one of the searches, and that's just going to be. Good how luck. Do you beat this team in search. Yeah, how do you beat this team in search? Like, so in Atlanta, they're going to probably win. And then, but if the Huntsmen win London, the Huntsmen are going to have 70. And if Atlanta wins Atlanta, they're going to have 70. So it'll still be first and second. So the Huntsmen, if they win London, can basically be like we're in first place. Well, Period. and it, it's going to be. Go ahead. I, I it, just it's interesting how the standings are going to work out. Yeah, I I get where, what you're saying. To me, it's just like I don't put too much into like these standings because it's just like it's just like Major League Baseball or the NBA where teams always have you know more games played than everybody else. So like mid season standings, like if you look at the mid season standings for the NBA right now, like you don't really put a lot into it just because, you know, some teams have played more, some teams have played less, some teams have played easier schedules, some teams have have played harder, but in the end it'll all work itself out. So like for now, I don't know how much I put into it. I I think everybody's going to have their own personal viewpoints and power rankings and stuff like that. And then once the playoffs come or whatever they're calling it, um, that's when it'll yeah. really shake out in the end. Well, there's going to be a midseason tournament um, that's going to be seeded by the standings. And then a... Thanks for the follow, Rex. And then, and then at the end of this, we're going to have champs, of course, which is going to be seeded by this list. Um, and I believe like the bottom four have to do a playoff to see who the two of them that get in or something. Um, nice. So now that it's 357, you guys in about three or four minutes, you'll hear my youngest kids come in and scream if we're still streaming. But I'm going to let, uh, I, I know it's crazy, but I'm going to let Icon give us his power rankings. Um, and I'll tell you guys after he's done how hard it was like for me to try to do power rankings. But Icon's going to give us his current power rankings um, based on the event we just saw. Uh, and maybe some reasoning, but and then we'll kind of end the stream there. All right, so power rankings, what you've all been waiting for. At the bottom, I do have New York. I don't think that they'll stay there just because they showed the potential that they have in that one map against Atlanta. But if I had to say right now, I would put New York at the bottom. In 11th, I would put Toronto. So the only reason why, even though they were pretty dominant in their search and destroys over the weekend, not being able to really win a respawn, I think has them at the bottom for me. And you might say, well, there's more, there's so many teams there that, that were 0 and 2 over the weekend, but I just, I don't see the slaying power from Toronto. They were largely carried by methods. So I think those two things kind of mixed together. There has Toronto at 11 above that. I have OGLA. Um, I don't know. They didn't really show much to me. And it sounds kind of weird because before this weekend started, I had them in that middle of the pack range, but um, they just didn't play well. Kenny and Dashy had a decent weekend, but TJ had like a 0. 0.7. JCap had like a 0. 0.7. Um, they just weren't really all that dominant. So I'd put OGLA at 10. At 9, sorry to break your heart, Kingdom, but I have Seattle there at 9. Mm -hmm. um, Slacked and Enable were really they just really didn't show up like they needed them to. Octane was phenomenal, and Karma and Apathy played. And I don't know, kind of, kind of, just the usual that you would expect from them. But in order for them to perform better, uh, they need Slack and Enable to show up. Above that, I have the Royal Ravens, just because Scraps and Wuskin showed how good they could be, and then they showed kind of like Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, the second match, they were just like the exact opposite. So that's why I have them middle of the pack. I guess you could probably maybe put them under Seattle, but they showed London showed their potential. So that's why I have them where they're at. 
Um, also, for them to play better, Jerd needs to play better. Jerd can't do the same thing that he did over the last weekend. Above that, I have LAG, so Los Angeles, Gorillas. Um, Aqua was the bright spot for them, but the thing with LAG is that they're really good at search and destroy. They were technically 2-1 and one over the weekend, but that one was a forfeit like we've mentioned a couple times, so they were really good at search. Um, if Aches is able to double the what he put out before, right? He was right around like 0.5 the whole time. So if Aches is able to double his production, then I think LAG could easily be top five, top six, but we'll put him there for now. Coming in at sixth, I have Florida. Skies and mocks were phenomenal. Pristini and Search and Destroy is so much fun to watch. So um, I put them there. And then getting into the top five, I have Paris. Again, nobody expected Paris to do what Paris did, but Kismet, Shox, Dens were all really good. Luca needs to play better. Luca had a really subpar weekend, uh, but Paris there. At number four, and you're probably wondering why I haven't said Dallas yet, but I'm not even there yet. At number four, I have Minnesota. God RX and Assault are phenomenal. ASIM had a poor weekend, but online ASIM has been absolutely frying. So I do expect ASIM to turn it around, but they're so good at respawn, but they weren't very good at search. So at number four, I have Minnesota. I really do think I, I can't see them being beneath number four, though. At three, I have Dallas, and you might say, well, they got absolutely spanked this weekend, but everybody would agree that they played the two best teams. So if this was the traditional style where you're playing, you know, you're dropping into losers bracket and going on a run, I think they probably would have ended up somewhere near that grand finals. Uh, maybe they wouldn't right. have made it, but they would have been there. So Crimsex played really well, but Illy and Shotzi, they need to they need to step it up. It is what it is. And then at number two, I have Chicago just because you can't really put anybody above Atlanta. So Formal, RCD, Scump, Gunless all played really well. Envoy, if he you know, gets in that 1.2 range, especially on, on respawns, uh, I can see that being an absolute bloodbath w whenever they meet Atlanta. And then obviously, we've talked about it so much, but Atlanta at one. Simp and Cellium were phenomenal. If a BZ figures it out and he plays the way that a BZ normally plays, uh, that's, that's going to be like 90s bulls. I mean, they're, they'll just be so good. So that's it. That's what right. I got. That's the list, guys. Um, thank you guys so much uh, for hanging out today. Uh, I would say the only thing I would change is I would switch Seattle and London, and I switched Dallas and Minnesota. Um, but that's so hard for me. Like outside of there's – I haven't seen enough. You know, I haven't seen enough playing. I can, I've seen enough playing to see who's the top two teams, easy, um, who should be the top four, yeah. And I've seen enough to say who looks like they're going to be at the bottom. But, again, New York could come out and place top two or top three at London, and then they would be a different it, – it, it really – we didn't see enough. Uh, but I like your list. I actually, as, a, as you were going through it, I was kind of writing it down. And um, I like your list a lot. Um, thank you, all of you guys. There's a couple of you I didn't get to call out. Real Rob, Rexums, and not quite a lung doc. Thank you guys for following <laughs> the stream. We've got a million follows today. A um, couple of subscribers. Thank you guys that subscribed. Thank you guys for hanging out for the last two hours. Um, and uh, tweet at me if you... Yeah, we should get three events before power ranking. <laughs> um, tweet at me if you guys want to see this more often. Um, as often as... as uh, as icon is available we'll try to you know do something i think he was talking about once a month or something like that so definitely after the major it. events doing something like this after a recap events, yeah. for sure we'll do a post event recap together and, and we'll get him on screen next time um but i appreciate you guys for hanging out um this is your boy kingdom i'm gonna run a uh short ad um you guys can hang out and talk to each other in the chat if you want <laughs> uh, but then i'm gonna be out of here uh, peace out guys <laughs>